done. Now you get this straight. You can kill all the black folks you want to, baby, but you will not kill the freedom of black folks. It's common. We're going to get it. We fought in every one of your damn lousy wars, baby, and you give us nothing. Now the war is going to be here because we're going to be free. Now you kill all you want to, but we kill too. I don't agree with the moderator nor Reverend Robinson that we want some kind of agreement. We want agreement by which we can live or die. You choose. If you won't listen to me when I make an appeal for the Negroes because you have no concern for the Negroes, listen to me when I make an appeal for America. You claim you love America. Well, we love America. But you are driving us back and you are making a Samson out of us and we are going to pull down the pillar. Should you try to pretend that I'm crazy because I want America to be saved? And then you think we have no right to ask for something? Is it too much to ask you to grant us human dignity? Should we be put down and shot to death for this request? If so, you can aim your guns. What the hell do you think we care about dying if you're going to deny us the right to live? Go on. Yep. Unfortunately, uh, one of these damn jokers there in Jacksonville didn't turn out too well for him. We'll go ahead into all those depictions and different things here uh, as always we're back Smash the like button, share this video. Yes, indeed, we are back. It's the bottom line, saying to Walden. What's going on, Beast Mode? I see you. Just going to go straight to the story and good morning to everyone. It is the bottom line, Santee Walk. We continue following breaking news tonight. A now former Jacksonville police officer is facing multiple criminal sex charges involving a minor. This former officer has been identified as 34 year old Josue Garriga III. This is a photo of him from when he was a deputy with the Putnam County Sheriff's Office before joining JSO. Let's get straight to news for Jack's reporter Eric Avenier joining us live from JSO headquarters with the latest Eric on Garriga's arrest. Well, Garriga was uh, Garriga resigned right before he was arrested in Clay County. Uh, prior to that arrest, he was a member of the JSO gang unit. And prior to his employment here at JSO, he was a sheriff's deputy with the Putnam County Sheriff's Office. But now he's a suspect in a criminal case involving 
uh, sexual misconduct. The criminal investigation into 34-year-old Josue Garriga III began nearly three weeks ago when the mother of a 17-year-old female told Clay County investigators that she found inappropriate communications on her daughter's cell phone. She also told investigators that she observed Garriga flirting with her underage daughter in church. When detectives searched the teenager's phone, they say they found more than 300 calls between her phone and Garriga's phone between October of last year and earlier this month. According to detectives, Garriga used the WhatsApp on his phone to send the teen nude pics of himself and solicit her to send nude pics of herself. The teen told detectives she last met with Garriga in person at an undisclosed business in Clay County, which was recorded on surveillance video. She also disclosed information about inappropriate touching inside his car. Garriga was arrested and booked into the Clay County Jail on a $375,000 bond after he was interviewed by detectives. Cops are held to a higher standard. They should be. They must be. News for Jack's crime and safety analyst Tom Hackney is a retired JSO director of investigations. He says the allegations against Garriga are beyond disturbing. It's truly infuriating is what it is. So you hear about these kind of things happening and there isn't a law enforcement officer, male, female, worth their salt, not just in Jacksonville, but really anywhere that hears about this that doesn't get their stomach turned. Garriga is no stranger to controversy. Back in 2019, he shot and killed 22-year-old Jamie Johnson during a traffic stop. Johnson was pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt. The interaction between the two men, which was recorded on police body cam, turned violent when Johnson and Garriga got into a scuffle. Although the shooting was ruled justifiable, Johnson's family filed a wrongful death suit in federal court against the city. Then the city settled the case for $200,000. And more recently, Garriga was also involved in the arrest of Luke Ken Woods, which sparked claims of police brutality. But Sheriff T.K. Waters said excessive force was not used. The man had two swollen eyes. And I want to point something out more in depth here because I love the chickens coming home to roost story. I am probably one of the greatest... Uh, uh, YouTube is here year to date when it comes to not only spotting these situations, letting you know when they're coming from, do, or uh, and how they're going to go down. And I often tell people the same message in here, dude. There is no retirement statue for a coon. Hey, the oh, moment you do anything, it'll be all over your hind parts. They already had, in most cases for these clowns, they already got the tickets in which they're going to sign off on uh, to bury you. No, it's just waiting for that time for you to step out of line and start acting all funky as if you run something around here. And then they're going to let you know where your place is. All right. No. And he they beat that young man's eyes shut on what it looked like. The damn illegal surveillance, illegal search of warrant, all this crap because the dude had priors here. So what? All right. They observed him and some guy put some stuff in the car. I remember this story because originally when we got it, what we got from Twitter was just the circumstances of five police officers beating the hell out of some guy who was already handcuffed. All right. No, alleging he would stop resisting arrest. They tried to say he fell off the sidewalk and ended up acquiring those two bruises that, that beat his eyes shut. But you can see clear as day, that came from someone's fist. And you had a police officer, uh, one of their chiefs, black dude, that ruled this justified, dude. All uh, right, And this is the most recent situation you know connected to this black, uh, or whatever he is, this tether race soldier. All right? Y'all niggas don't have any. You think you got... Uh, protections here joining the dominant society. Uh-uh. Your ass better sit back down and go have a conversation with Muhammad Nuor and see how well that flew over for him. All right? Ain't no such thing. When they get tired and they're sick of playing here and it's time to bring out some tough on crime, let's be harsh on the cops, they start looking for cats like you. You don't want to punish the white officers. All right? No. Notice they probably uh, look under uh, all involved in the same nefarious activities for the reason they're hanging around each other. All right, but that's usually not how it goes down, not at all. But they do set their sights on the coons. All right, it is never if, dude, but when. This is the video footage. I don't believe there's too much audio here. All right. And they're beating the hell out this guy. This is upon him falling already, but just beating the hell out of him. As you can see, the black dude, he's doing the most hitting. 
He says, you can see him. All right. He was doing the most beating of this young man's face. As he keeps staring over to see the guy recording. All right. What the hell do you keep looking over your damn shoulder for if you're just doing your job? Because you're obviously abusing this man. As you can see from the camera, that same black officer. All right. You've seen him look over at least four or five times. Eventually, the guy's driving up, getting closer. And look who runs over here first to make sure all right, that they go ahead and interfere within the citizens trying to protect themselves. Because you thugs shouldn't be able to run rampant. And every time you get a hold of a black person, the first thing they want to do is put some type of barricade around them so they can violate, beat his ass, possibly kill him without any type of witnesses or this, that, and the third all right, to say anything. Look as they drive his face into the ground. You don't have to. He's on his stomach. You don't have to lift his whole body up and then consistently keep pancaking his face into the ground. This is where the swelling came from, along with them punching him directly in the face. He's handcuffed already. Telling a man a situation where this is common. Even now that white woman kicked the man in his dick, kicked the white woman in her face here after she was already handcuffed on the sidewalk. All right? You got to understand the significance. If you're, if you're, if you're not tough and your, your tissues are not t- used to taking any type of punishment here, Hoss, this can easily lead to some form of brain damage or anything, damn thing else. They could end up killing you out here, beating on you savagely like this. All right? Talking about a bunch of jokers in their aspect in case weightlifting and the whole nine. All right? This dude ain't nothing but a damn string bean. You mean to tell me you took five of you pieces of crap to go ahead to apprehend him? No. And there goes the guy right there that got caught. Uh, Gorega. Uh-huh. I mean, they ain't got no reports about the other dudes. They got your stinking ass, though. All right? And be more uh, 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 brief with this here, because I do want to add some news to the senses of what I'm talking about here. Finally, I could eat my stone fly a nun. None? What's that? All right, get past the bow job. Got to get past the bow job. Here we go. Cut the sound back. Sheriff's office about this developing story. First Coast News spoke to the people who shot this video appearing to show a man on the ground with several officers around him. The video does not show the injuries to his face, but when he sits up, you can see swelling around. Yes, it does. As you see them bashing and smashing his face into the ground. So you can see where the injuries are coming. And when we seen a full scale video, what they tried to say is when he got hit with the taser and trip up and fell in the street, that's what caused the bruise into his face. Uh, perfectly like that there on damn near on both sides. As a matter of fact, I ain't perfectly one lump extending further than the other. That came from somebody's fist, Halls. And they beat him for quite a while behind that damn truck as they were acting like it was so difficult to get handcuffs on him. Yes, Negro, you deserve every bit of what you get in here. You can't sit here and you think you're going to side here with the oppressor and they're going to have your back. This is why this worm harried up and resigned before news came out here and they got word. This right here in Jacksonville, boy, you ain't got no friends. I don't like fool you like that. You good, and as long as you can serve their purpose, dude. Once that over, all right, that's finished. All right, well, it's time to get served up, dude. It's time to get served up, as I said. But every well-known boot licking, all right, well-to-do coon here in America. All right, you all have some type of switch and time clock on your forehead to when you expire and white daddy's not going to have enough. He, he's had enough. All right, nigga. All right, okay, that was cute. Okay. All right. All right, break it up. All right, time to throw you to the wolves. All right. None of you niggas are safe. Let him be an example for the rest of you guys figuring you hiding in plain sight. Because from what I was unaware is, is that no, and not only that, he ended up killing some black person as well. All right, so they really trust this damn coon. He didn't see it coming. We all did. Mm-hmm. No, you never seen it coming here. All right, and I'm glad to, to write your obituary here, Halls, because they are going to cook you. All right, and if you guys aren't informed to catch everybody up here just in tune, all right, one of the officers, the black officer there in particular that beat down that man and disfigured his face swelling, we couldn't even see his eyeballs literally beat his eyes shut for some damn quote-unquote drugs. I'm not sure if the dude had drugs or not, with how desperate and violent your race soldiers were. I mean, hell, you can't let the paperwork speak for itself or 
in the essence that you actually do have drugs on you, well, the police officer, uh, are there at right in that fourth right to beat you to an inch of your life because it already shows on record, you know, that you dabble in drugs and you got, nigga, that's, 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 that's lawlessness. Do you do that to the illegals in this country? No, you don't. Hell, if anything, they create, they commit crime and you act like you don't even see them. You no, know, Alvin Bragg acts like, look, man, hey, I'm going to have to fight and spar with Damn, every Latino organization out here, if I actually follow the law and punish these cats here. All right? No. Uh, meanwhile, back at the ranch here, the folks that uh, fit that moniker, you identify as black, the gods of what you see, Gorega. All right? No, they got something for you. They got some Omarosa treatment for you, dude. And now you will be the face and the label of inappropriate police in Jacksonville. Let's just put your face up next to that dog. Following breaking news tonight, a now former Jacksonville police officer is facing multiple criminal sex charges involving a minor. This former officer has been identified as 34-year-old Josue Garriga III. This is a photo of him when he was a deputy with the Putnam County Sheriff's Office before joining JSO. Let's get straight to news for Jacks reporter Eric Avigny joining us live from JSO headquarters with the latest Eric on Garriga's arrest. Well, Garriga, was, uh, Garriga resigned right before he was arrested in Clay County. Uh, prior to that arrest, he was a member of the JSO gang unit. And prior to his employment here at JSO, he was a sheriff's deputy with the Putnam County Sheriff's Office. But now he's a suspect in a criminal case involving uh, sexual misconduct. The criminal investigation into 34-year-old Josue Garriga III began nearly three weeks ago when the mother of a 17-year-old female told Clay County investigators that she found inappropriate communications on her daughter's cell phone. She also told investigators that she... Man, they need to search his home as well. Now, I'm putting you out there. Your home needs to be searched. Nigga, if it only took three weeks to see that you was messing around with some 17-year-old inside the church... The mama recovered a whole bunch of inappropriate text messages and stuff, the naked pictures that her daughter was sending to you and you were sending to her, her daughter on WhatsApp. Three weeks is all it took to uncover all this. Ain't no telling the bars around the block how much dirt he got. It does not go ahead to jog your mind that he didn't try to put any resistance forth whatsoever. No, nigga, because this is a small thing here underneath of the scale of the tree that buries fruit. That's what I believe. All right. No, you want to hurry up and get out the way so ain't nobody staring at you like that? What else do you got to hide? Hard drives and everything else need to be stripped out of his house here, Hoss, before he can burn and destroy evidence. All right. Like I said, they already got this, man. Three weeks? Now, that sounds like somebody was already looking at your file in the back here and wanted to take the context of what they already had based on the newfound information to create a direct assumption of what it is. And these validations also come from the little girl. Uh -huh. When well, she said they was ending up in situations alone. All right. He was touching her and stuff. Inappropriate. All these different things. He's already got these charges on him, dude. And guess what? Not one of these white officers are going to get up to come to your aid about your character or anything else. If they do get up to say something, it would be about weird and inappropriate things that they look and figure that's attached to you. That all makes sense now. Like why you may be around in, in, in the atmosphere around some of these young little girls. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, what you have is a sexual predator here, declarated in a damn a, a race soldier uniform here, all which is becoming some of y'all monikers here. The, the child pedophilia and police is starting to come hand in hand here, all All right, it just is. All right, you want to see the major cases of this? You look around at these guys. The criminal investigation into 34-year-old Josue Garriga III began nearly three weeks ago when the mother of a 17-year-old female told Clay County investigators that she found inappropriate communications on her daughter's cell phone. She also told investigators that she observed Garriga flirting with her underage daughter in church. When detectives searched the teenager's phone, they say they found more than 300 calls between her phone and Garriga's phone between October of last year and earlier this month. According to detectives, Garriga used the WhatsApp on his phone to send the teen nude pics of himself and solicit her to send nude pics of herself. The teen this nigga, October of last year, my, uh, right, the investigation was three months. So it, it just goes to show you, and I'm, I'm giving this mindset of coonery and folks that depict themselves as non-black here 
and how much free reigns they actually feel like they have. All right. No, America made him feel comfortable as long as his uh, the people that he were abusing was black here. All right. No, as long as that abuse was there and nobody, none of these folks reported you with any solid evidence. All right. There's no backing for you bootlicks. Let me tell you something else. All right. You better, and I say you better go ask Muhammad no war. Oh, when it comes to their police unions, no, the white folks have a separate police union just for them and then one for you. You're not going to get the same provisions that they get, dude. All right. And as far as you're resigning, I'm not even sure if he's still there in some type of sector or qualified immunity where he can still use that. It doesn't look like it based on all the information that they're able to give you firsthand. Yep. All right. No, you willfully resign, dude. So that kind of takes plausible but deniability as far as back in the blue and back in the badge here. All right. Of you being a good old boy. It ain't like the uh, uh, what is it? Uh. <clears throat> The, the McMichaels here, where well, that guy's a former officer, and they're just going to kind of let you, hell no, they got this paperwork and evidence and all these damn text messages, and they went to work. Three weeks later, you no, know, you're resigning, we're sitting here in front of the news, and you're caught, but he was pretty emboldened. You know, he killed the person, you was involved in a situation with beating a black person's eyes shut. He was very emboldened to say, damn, I have white man super citizenship and I can do whatever the hell I want. Shit. How about now, Hawks? How you think about that now, huh? Wherever you are at, ashy, nervous, all right? Hoping that the damn, uh, the same boys that you rode with don't kick the damn door in, Hawks, and find the rest of that shit you got hidden back there. All right? You're going down, dude. All right? That's why we say even in the essence... Uh, of uh, you putting all this other extra stuff on your phone, uh, as I said, Twitter, uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all these different apps, Snapchat, different things that folks like to go ahead and get into. This will be the track record in which they go back to look at for him. What's app? All right. So many idiots sitting here thinking there's so much discretion with all of these websites. No, it ain't. It's not. All right. If these damn folks really want to get into some of this stuff, they can't. Screenshot, save, uh, uh, do whatever, and have your full line of transcripts and paperwork when the court case starts, man. Nobody here is slick. If anything, that helps law enforcement as far as their duties being a lot more easier. All right? Yes. And he's too stupid for his own good. He stared. He marveled at race soldiers here in America, the white ones being a judge, juror, and executioner. He, I, look, I can join that brand. All right? No, I can be one of these guys here. And do what they do. No, you can't. All right. And this is a little bit reminder for you boot licks with badges on here in America, dude. A day like this is coming to you. The teen told detectives she last met with Garriga in person at an undisclosed business in Clay County, which was recorded on surveillance video. She also disclosed information about inappropriate touching inside his car. Garriga was arrested and booked into the Clay County Jail on a $375,000 bond after he was interviewed by detectives. Cops are held to a higher standard. They should be, they must be. News for Jack's crime and safety analyst Tom Hackney is a retired JSO director of investigations. He says the allegations against Garriga are beyond disturbing. It's truly infuriating is what it is. So you hear about these kind of things happening and there isn't a law enforcement officer, male, female, worth their salt, not just in Jacksonville, but really anywhere that hears about this that doesn't get their stomach turned. Garriga is no stranger to controversy. Back in 2019, he shot and killed 22-year-old Jamie Johnson during a traffic stop. Johnson was pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt. The interaction between the two men, which was recorded on police body cam, turned violent when Johnson... Now, this looks like as they go through the history of his dirty crimes, some connected with other white race soldiers here. Does this look like they're prepared to give him a public defense? Or does this look like they're giving him a public hit piece before he even steps in the courtroom? You be the judge. Does it seem like this white man has came in here to sow seeds of plausible deniability? Or does it look like that every damn race soldier that sees his stinking face come up in there or hear Hulse is going to have criticisms and don't look for any support? You see, the only group that you have here in America as a black person is other black people. You define these rules to go work with white society. Well, you're compromised. And in the back of their mind, 
even if you are so much of a, of a good tool to be used, you still at some point needs to be uh, annihilated. All right. No, when when the coons in a lot of cases sit around for a good little while and they finally get this essence and impact of, of uh, striking back here, Hawks. All right, white society knows these measures are coming through the lanes of time, so they must use the time of the Sambos wisely here before they are woken upon to strike from within the inside. That's why I say uh, white supremacy feels like it is their duty to break their tools. If this if this turncoat, mm -hmm, like your peoples can't trust this turncoat, your family, people that love you, your blood, all right, uh, folks of your ethnicity, they cannot trust you. You're a turncoat. You're selling them out. What makes us feel as if you're going to hold any solid devotion and loyalty towards us if your own can't trust you, dude? That is the golden rule. All right. So selling out only gets you but so far, but there is no retirement plan. All right. Not at all. Case in point, I'm speaking real to you. All right. Black empowerment for social media is the poor man's lane. Ain't no money in this. It's not. Hell, you can hear me goddamn complaining every two or three days. Hey, man, we got to support the war chest. We can't operate off of nothing. All right, no, my little bit of custodian pennies, they just ain't going to get the, the, the job done. Yeah, help where you can. All right, dog, this ain't where the paper's at, dude. All right, boot licking, ass kissing and all that, selling out. You can get a check working for white supremacy. You can get a check protecting the gates of black society. Ain't no damn paper here. None. Not a nickel here, Hawks. And you got to understand for people like myself and others who have de dedicated ourselves to the great fight, this allegiance is until you die, Hawks. It don't stop when I get off a line to make a video, nigga. This continues to, to process through my life, the different relationships, stuff that I deal with here, Hawks. Uh, 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 being able to get safe passage in certain lanes uh, uh, where you don't usually have any trouble. The new black media got to deal with all of this. All right, folks harassing you, shutting down certain things in here, using un unconstitutional things to come after you, Hawks. Yes. This is what we're subject to till we die because we are defending black empowerment and going against the grain, all right? And so many coons have been taught here not to support their own, that this registers for a lot of individuals who rather using it, all right? You, you have a mentality like this, rather you know you indicating into this or not, all right? That's why I even, I don't go off of the bubble here, listen to little whining, hating niggas, they sitting here, Oh, damn, man, that black-owned business, they charging too much for chicken and macaroni and cheese. You're going to go in there and pay them Asians or them folks in Walmart whatever they ask, and you ain't going to complain at all. All right? So I sit there, bad mouth for black business, and talk about what the hell you ain't going to pay for, dude. Move your silly ass along. All right? That's the problem. We have been taught to damn demonize our own, dude. This is where your, kid, your, your coons come from in the first place. All right? Yes, indeed. All right. You want to, to, to fight the good fight for black empowerment here, Halls? Yeah, that ain't the luxury side. It is just the streets. All right. No, you'll be sitting around the real. All right. And I'm blessed to be here. But this is not the, the uh, bankroll central sitting through here. All right. The Candace Owens lanes, if, if you're talking about uh, media, whatever, on the levels of on the Internet here, that's where the role is. at. All right. White supremacy is willing to invest billions and to get their message across here. All right. Yes, indeed. This is why they say they have a line of damn coons. Your, your Jason Whitlocks to Stephen A. Smith uh, to your Sage Steels. There's a line of them around the corner. All right. To sell out halls. All right. Crying shame. But it's the truth. And there is no retirement plan. You just start to get that Rachel Dolezal treatment. There isn't a law enforcement officer, male, female, worth their salt, not just in Jacksonville, but really anywhere, that hears about this that doesn't get their stomach turned. Garriga is no stranger to controversy. Back in 2019, he shot and killed 22-year-old Jamie Johnson during a traffic stop. Johnson was pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt. The interaction between the two men, which was recorded on police body cam, turned violent when Johnson and Garriga got into a scuffle. Although the shooting was ruled justifiable, 
Johnson's family filed a wrongful death suit in federal court against the city. Then the city settled the case for $200,000. And more recently, Cariga was also involved in the arrest of Luke Ken Woods, which sparked claims of police brutality. But Sheriff T.K. Waters said excessive force was not used. And this nigga has six. He, this nigga has serious. He got prime time on his face, but obsessive force wasn't used. Your face is curved, Hawes. They played planning the sidewalk. Did this man? His face is curved here around. He's got lumps on the side. He's gotten his ass whipped. You all right? For the black dude and the rest of the race soldiers there, they didn't get punished for this. But this is clearly police brutality. I don't give a damn how much narcotics he got had on him here, Hawks. I don't care. You probably ain't had that much. You guys are snatching up cartels coming over here with pallets of fentanyl and kilos of coke. Meanwhile, a nigga gets seven grams of whatever he got on him, and he's a mass damn terrorist who needs to, to, to look to be beat on and victimized in the public. And this is exactly what he got with the police chief commending these rogue bastards. All right. Yes, indeed. But the golden rule in story is, is that white supremacy breaks their tools. You are never truly home, dude. No, you're not. The only true home you can have is next there to a black person. That is your savior. That even anticipates the qualities of your legacy. What's going on in Tool of We Wise? I see you in the building, sister. All right, well, it's beast mode. Yeah, yeah they're cowards. Well, he's a coward. Chicken, chickens came home to roost, y'all. Uh, yes, indeed. And a wonderful Sunday for us, Easter Sunday for some of you. And like I say, we are back to do the duties and to work on every holiday. Every holiday. Because these so-called holidays are not special here, Hoss, unless we validate to say that they are. All right. And what have I warned everybody here about? And the brothers like Jason Black, who set the trend for working on the cases of black empowerment for every damn holiday here, Hawks. These are the pacified days in which the dominant society hopes, wishes, and plans that your behind is going to be sleep as a black person. The wheels of white supremacy never stop rolling. They are working while you're sleeping, Hawks. All right. That's why in certain cases, you might even see me up late at night doing a video, but I'm if I'm up late at night, I'm working. If I ain't sleep, I'm somewhere by a computer. I'm staring at stories. I'm comparing certain lines of footage and materials, going over certain information to make sure I got it right. Yeah, all these different things. Because sharpening our swords, sharpening our swords mentally is important if we're going to go ahead to deal with the matters of systematic white supremacy. You're literally scrambled in the circumstances of a war. And when your enemy has been so clever here in the lanes to say, oh shit, Christmas, ah, oh, Thanksgiving, New Year's, all right, Easter Sunday, okay? All these holidays where, you know, family gets together and people put their guards down. Okay, this is the best time for us to strike. All right, no, you, 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 you're inebriated. All right, no, you tell them what your family, you're off work, you got your hair down. You don't really expect anything. As I said, why else do you think now that they got a holiday in every month now? Why do you think that is? Huh? More celebration, more partying as the, as the shit burns down around you, dude. No, just turn the music up and shake your booty a little bit more. All right, shake it a little bit more. All right, until a stink starts floating in the air. That's what you got to do to, to, to escape, to get true justice. This is what they're telling you. Yeah, shake your booty for justice. All right? This is where we at, man. Damn my holiday, man. No, grown people get their asses up and go pay for whatever they want here, Halls, when you need it, when you would like it. That's why you've been working so damn hard. All right. So when you want something, you can actually get up and get it. You don't have to wait for the white man to say, hey, today's gingerbread day. All right. You can go out and get yourself something nice, nigga. All right. Now go on, go on, get yourself something. No. You talk about the folks acting as if they don't live in parts of a 
control society. And then the moment these holidays come in, you're jumping right into swing. You're buying memorabilia. You're putting a goddamn sweater on. You got mugs and all this stupid ass shit around your house. For what? It's a waste of bread. It's a waste. Economically, you got folks out here going through it. You're tucking ass. You're trying to make sure that you make certain payments and what have you and keeping your head above water to be able to maintain the stuff that you do have here, hogs. Ain't no extra coins to throw in the back of the gutter somewhere. Damn a holiday. All right? No, I'm fighting for black empowerment because as you wake up here tomorrow when you get past the new tennis shoes and, uh, hey, if you want to serve something to kids, by all means, give it to them. But don't let them forget the message of that these are distractions out here. All right? And I put this too into swing for my folks who have children or maybe you have a wife or different family members who do not agree with you not taking positions to celebrate some of these holidays. This is my only rule for that, dude. If you are going to take certain holidays from your families and from your kids, you're going to have to replace it with something, dude. All right. No, you must replace it with something. Fine. Okay. You got your principles. All right. Your wife respects that. Your kids respect that. But you as a man will have to replace it with something. This does not take you away from duty, Hawks. All right. Some of you cheap niggas think that this is a lane for you not to do anything for your peoples. You're wrong. I'm going to give you a prime example from the cases of my mom dukes here growing up. Uh, I was about nine or ten. My mother became a Jehovah Witness there. And with the factors of her, you know, becoming a Jehovah Witness, we, my, me and my brothers had to play a part in this. As, as y'all don't know, I'm, I'm the youngest of three brothers. And it was hell going to the Kingdom Hall, man. My mother bought like two checkered suits. And me and my brother Irvin had matching checkered damn suits here. They looked stupid as hell. Get laughed at coming out by the kids and shit. Kids so immature. All right, as you go into church and come back in. And of course, Urban had grown too big at some point in time to fit his, what you call it, clothes. And I grew out of the outfit that my mother bought me. So she told me to start wearing his other suit there. All right. No, and which is in the cases there, I believe, um, you know, I had to go ahead to proceed to, to do that. But let me get to my point. All right. As she switched over to the terms of these religions and things like that, she stopped Christmas in our home. All right. Christmas was stopped there. We didn't receive uh, Christmas. All right. So for her to balance things there in the crib with us, the moment the income tax checks would come back to tax return, she would just take us to the store so we could get our own stuff, our own clothes and shoes. We can hand pick things ourselves versus you looking for a surprise up underneath of the tree and Santa Claus, this, that and the third. All right. Yes. My mom took Christmas away, but she replaced it with something. All right. That is the point. All right. It gives your children and everyone else here a better understanding. It's no, it's not the circumstances that you can't have here, X, Y, Z. We're just not going to do these things here on that day. All right. But you're still going to be rewarded and given things. My mother more so after that point in time in her life, if she wanted to purchase anything for us, she just got it for us throughout the year. All right. And it taught all of us something. If you wanted something in that case, you're going to get it throughout the year. All right, not to sit for a white man and stay stand here to say that today's Groundhog Day and you can go enjoy yourself. No, no. All right, that ain't how to work, period. If you are some type of free thinker and your mind is on a perspective of not following the dominant society because they always lying anyway. All right, and I point back here to him. All right, dude. Jacksonville Police Department is underneath of a lot of pressure, lawsuits, and scrutiny right now. Dead bodies piled up, parents not being informed about these things here, your abuses towards the residents, the local just incompetency, and the fact that it is an uproar for justice out of your police department. Your police department right now should be controlled by the feds. All right. They should be able to take over at this point for all the corrupt individuals that have been able to be promoted throughout the years. All right. And he's the first piece of head there in a beacon of a long strike of cartoon characters that will be knocked down. Dude. All right. Don't make no mistake about it. You start talking about pedophilia. 
All right. And dirty, nefarious crimes here. And this guy's face will pop up rightfully. So he ain't no freakman. He's a tether. All right. May the wolves enjoy their meal. That goes for all you coons. All right. As they bring other paperwork out on you and you will, of course, as always get further updates from the bottom line right here. All right. As things unfold. Now, Let's get to the subject matter and topics of other stories that I do have here. All right. I wanted to give him the floor. All right. I'm going to follow one follow up here and then I'm going to get to the story. All right. Of a bad hairline having tether. All right. Who's in trouble for doing stupid stuff here. And I'm, when I get to this third story here, you're going to understand possibly while I, I held off, I need a second just to step away. So I'm going to give you uh, one of our updates here. Okay. It's going to take two seconds here. A set ride. What's up, Anthony Malden? Um, RJ, what's going on, family? Good morning to everyone and much love. Smash the like button. All right. And good family. Make sure that if you haven't, all right, make sure that you go on over and support the war chest. We do not have the um super chats and stuff set up. So this is the way that um you can contribute to the channel if you would like to. All right, thank you. And much love to everybody who has smashed the like button and in attendance. All right. You are appreciated. Let's go ahead and get into these circumstances I'm talking about here. Where's this full screen picture that I have here? There you go, Haiti. Back to Haiti. All right. Moron thought that it was okay to take his hind parts down there. He's known as being this guy who, you know, he goes into the, you know, into the lion's mouth. All right. If it's something challenging and people are kind of spooked or there's a worry, there's war and stuff, that's where he goes at. This is where he's made his line in the work of being, quote, unquote, fearless. All right. Problem. There's a reason why a bunch of white folks ain't geared up to go in here and play games in Haiti because you can actually lose your life. And many times you see the prime minister call for the help of the French military for other continents, police departments. They calling for the help from the U.S., just that and the third, and nobody's showing up other than to get people out of there, dude. Your stupid ass shouldn't be over there. All right? You shouldn't. All right? No fly zone. We'll be right back in a minute. Bottom line. Good morning. Atlanta man allegedly kidnapped by a dangerous gang in Haiti. The U.S. government now involved in this volatile situation, but the next steps are still uncertain. Atlanta News First, Adam Murphy is outside the FBI with the latest tonight. All it takes is one stupid gang member holding an AK-47 for one thing to go wrong. So we're not taking that risk at night. His name is Addison Malou, better known online as your fellow Arab. We'll get there while it's dark, and that place is completely run by gangs. So you don't want to be dealing with the gangs, even though we have safe passage. We're already approved. He's a social media influencer from Atlanta, also known for conducting interviews in dangerous places. Do, do the shops pay them for protection? Um, like a tax? It's, it's something like that. In some, in some cases it is, in some cases it's not. His latest adventure led him to Haiti, where violent gangs have seized control of most of the capital city of Port-au-Prince. Malouf made this post on X before entering this danger zone. Going on another one of those trips. If I die, thanks for watching what I've put out. If I live, all glory to God. And during his trip, things went terribly wrong. Atlanta News First has confirmed with the White House that Malouf was kidnapped in Haiti for ransom. And the State Department also said they are aware of the kidnapping of a U.S. citizen. This as the State Department has issued a do not travel advisory to the area, stating that the security situation in Haiti is unpredictable and dangerous. We have facilitated the safe departure of over 340 U.S. citizens out of Haiti since March 17th. It's unclear what steps federal authorities are now taking to assure Malouf's safe return home. How many times in your life are you the only person in an entire hotel because the country's completely shut down? No one should be coming in. And here at the FBI headquarters in Atlanta, they too confirm they are aware of this kidnapping situation. Clearly, there are several government agencies working together in an attempt to resolve this situation as quickly as possible. In Atlanta, Adam Murphy. Atlanta News First. Awesome. Thank you. How'd I look? The key to being rich is knowing what counts. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Wait until I 
again reinforcement tonight. Tonight, the stunning new images just in as we come on the air. The first look. On All right, y'all, I'm here. Kind of going back and forth. And today, Sunday, I'm waiting, halfway waiting for my old lady to pull up. Not that I'm going to go ahead and stop the show here, but she, that look, has a good deal of the rest of the things here that I need to proceed. Your story sounds like my story. My grandmother was a Jehovah Witness. She never denied us anything or talked down about other religions beliefs but she gave all year there you go right i grew up here a lot of folks where you know me at uh personally i'm whatever wherever i'm at in maryland i grew up here in this same hood here um of course underneath of the pretense of section eight there i'm paying fair market rent here and where i used to live at in this community was somewhere in the, in the middle I'm, I'm at the top here closer to where the store is and um it ain't cheap to live over this joker at all things have changed um get noticed with Nikki. Things have changed pretty hard here. Um, gentrification as well. I stand around, look at this town. I'm looking at people that come in, in and out of the local store. I don't recognize anyone, nobody. There is a bunch of Latinos and Asians and all other types, Indians, especially Indians around here. Bunch of them walking up and down the strip. This community where I came from was thorough. I mean, very hood, predominantly black. If you knew a white person around here, Everybody knew who that white person was. All right. It just wasn't anything extra here. You understand? For now, all right. The only people that's rare in my community now, after what, 36 years of me living, is me. Folks like myself. If they ain't in prison or they ain't dead here, hoes, they don't live over here anymore. All right. That's a fact. All right. If they ain't one of the two, they've completely moved out of the area. Baltimore to another state, wherever they're going, Glen Burnie, wherever they went to move at D.C., but they don't live over here anymore. All right. That's the, the gentrification that has happened to my damn community firsthand. And I've been able to look at it. And so many of my brothers and sisters here can vouch for that. They go up to that local damn what you call front store. You look around and shit. It's a completely different environment, dude. Even down to the cases of the, the kids in the school letting out across the street there. Everything's different, dude. All right? Absolutely. And as far as the YouTube I just had here on the screen, um, good riddance, dude. Good riddance. I don't have any remorse for you. Stay the hell out of people's business. All right? You have no right to invade a person's country here, Hawks, when the residents have forced to leave out of their spot. They got to go. So what is the need for your bucket head ass to pull up? All right, what you here for? Oh, I got the whole hotel to myself. I might as well get in the pool. Nigga, you might as well go home, man, before you ain't able to go home. You better go home, nigga, for you can't. You ain't never heard that before? Huh? Yeah. What meanwhile, you got people trying to tell you. Guess, guess what? Them people over there in Haiti were working at that hotel. They had to make ends meet. They got to do what they got to do. You don't have to be there. Therefore, you are something called a pariah and somebody intervening and interfering in their business. Why does Haiti and a lot of these other countries, rather than the continent or the Caribbean, have all these big ass problems? Because nosy, flim flam, bullshit ass jokers can pop up in their lands with a microphone and a camera and make up any lies they want to. And what did he get snatched up? What did he say before he was snatched up on their land in the hotel? Oh, well, I got to go around 3 a.m. Can't go now because any of these games, you know, all it takes is one gang with an AK. And I'm pretty sure they were listening to you, dude. All right. And one gang with an AK that was close to that damn hotel that you were standing at made sure you didn't pass one checkpoint before you got your steak and ass snatched up. And guess what? There was no military in relief to come in here to save you because they told you and all residents to evacuate and get the hell out of here. There should be no troops or U.S. citizens coming over to get that YouTuber. You live in Port-au-Prince now, nigga. That is your residence. You able to dig a hole for you if you are blessed with that, which they ain't digging holes for their own residence. Did y'all see the news over there? All right, no. When a person gets killed now in Haiti, they just throwing a white sheet over top of you and leaving your ass in the middle of the street. That is your coming home ceremony. What are you talking about? We did have a funeral for you. We're like, well, all right, he's stinking and niggas. All right, well, we put a sheet over him. That this is what they doing, hoes. Huh? Ain't enough, ain't enough labor, time, sweat, and energy to dig all these damn holes. 
All right, we're talking about God damn it, uh, 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 certain diseases coming in that come with starvation. All right, all these other terms here, and you up there, what trying to get a couple views, nigga, nigga, get in this ground, dude. Huh, get lined up and get in this ground. All right, on top of this ground, get underneath for this white sheep, nigga. All right, what do you mean? All right, no, you, you thought wrong. Shit. They probably should. He was to last night's dinner, dude. Folks are starving, man. All right? And you look like Sam Sausage here. All right? Deprived of resources and then your colonizer, you, you, the colonizer's face comes along. All right? You would have been safer if you were another black person with some dirty clothes on. They might have possibly let you pass. All right? Oh, he's another impoverished one like us. You're an Indian? Huh? In the middle of hell, of murder, high power fire of uh, firearms here, starvation, and port au prince. Yeah, you're smart, man. Such a high IQ. Such a high stinking ass IQ, dude. All right. No, I ain't gonna say nothing. What's to be said? All right. No, what's to be said? Speaking of what's to be said here. All right, no, you brought your stupid ass somewhere that you ain't but belong, standing around. Oh, I'm just gonna go at 3 a.m. I'll get him, yeah, yeah, and they was waiting for your ass at 2:45, nigga. Uh, 2:45, they was set up at the back row waiting for your stupid ass to come driving in. Got one, huh? Got one, huh? Turn them sweet ass pockets inside out, halls. And get on that goddamn phone and get that ransom money up. And I said right now. And I mean right goddamn now. Get that ransom money up. All right? That's where he's at. You want to know where he at? That's where he's at. In a cave, in the back of a shed, a shanty building somewhere, tied up, getting foot broken off in his ass about getting that damn... Uh, hostage money up, and they may still not let his dirty ass live. He's not guaranteed to live afterwards, dude. All right, even after he sacrificed every coin he has, dude. All right, they still might kill his ass. All right, he probably sitting over there trying to offer what he can, or this, that, and the third man. They ain't trying to hear that. All right, I'm gonna beat on your ass, and you're gonna be hostage until this war is over, dude. What are you talking about? Even then you might live, you might not live. All right, but we don't know how long we're gonna have to go with our resources since you got some, dude. All right. No, we're your new best friends, family members, and disciplinary halls. All right, and your new home of residence is this seat right here. And if you give us any bad information, we'll beat your ass for 24 hours. This is what you asked for, dude. This is what you asked for. All right, mind your own damn business, Hawks, before you become their business. All right, there you go. Valuable lesson. It's wartime over there, and they're taking prisoners. All right, speaking of, they're taking prisoners. All right, nobody's going to come looking for your little porky the pig built ass. All right, I hope it was worth it. All right. As they make a little gripe for you online. Who gives a damn? All right. I hope they got you in a half Nelson right now going to your body. Huh? Asking about that damn hostage money. Mm hmm. Because in certain spots in the Latino countries, they'll kill you a lot quicker. No, they'll kill you. Even as the money is coming, they'll kill you a whole lot faster if that money don't hurry up. All right. And you'd be dead stinking. So I don't know what your time limit is on living. All right, with how fast that money's supposed to be out there. You start chopping off fingers and everything else. They got machetes, dude. All right, you'll be a one-legged, one-armed joker. All right, straggling out of there. All right, you're playing games in the wrong place. Anytime I'm looking at the damn news, national news, and they're showing clips of Haitian citizens, all right, lining up a bunch of the teenagers, handing them machetes, talking about we can't depend on Canada. We can't depend on the U.S. We got to be able to ride and do this stuff ourselves. Yeah, you don't show up there, Alt. 
That's not where you come in here to play a great play games where the gang leader's name is barbecue. Huh? I don't know too many people that's going to roll a dice with their life underneath of those circumstances. No, the leader of the gang's name is barbecue. Huh? You all right? No, they didn't ransack the bank. They looted a bank, Halls. That's when you know it's all real. All right? No, show me resistance where you prepared to run up in a bona fide white supremacist establishment and clean that joint out. All right. I'm talking about a serious economics. And then I'll show you a national, uh, excuse me, a national threat here. All right. Yes. According to them. All right. No, they, they've taken white folks money. You damn right. They took their money because in their minds, it's their money anyway. You're just holding it in our lands. But that money belongs to us, meaning the Haitian citizens. All right. I will say me. All right. No, but the Haitian citizens. So when they run in there to loot it, they're just collecting the bread that you was already supposed to give them for vacating in their damn lands all right, and all the other bull craps you're doing. And now that Porky the Pig guy belongs to them too. All right, treat his ass like a piece of furniture here, all. All right, yes, that's how it's going to go down. Well, at least until you did. All right. Let's go on over here to the circumstances of some other moron here. I'm sick of all of the mentally ill, weird people out here. You ain't shit, you ain't worth a damn, all right? When it comes to uh, 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 protecting society and folks need to be warned. And they caught this idiot, he bought 250 pounds worth of nails, dude. He's running around deliberately putting nails in the street here, all. He caused one resident to have to get four new tires and he's buying specific type nails all right, that he knows, all right, are going to damage your tires here, Hoss, that are more probable to go ahead to do this and to be effective. All right, you know how much research you got to put into some crab cake shit here to do this? And, and the, the the more disgusting side of this tether, because when you see the, the hairline and the George Jefferson, and, uh, it's a tether, dude. All right, you no, know, you're a bona fide tether. This joker spent somewhere around $1,500 or so just to plant nails and victimize and cost the towns around here money. All right, yeah. All right, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to show y'all how the police caught him because they did catch him. All right? No, my old lady just had problems with her truck here recently, man. At least one of them, man. All right? And we just found that to be the some of the circumstances very suspicious. And what she was sitting there telling me is that, you know, in certain parts there that you leave out, like with the maybe trash around certain parts of the towns of uh, here in Maryland, I'm at. All right. There's all types of things on the road, man. Some of y'all may have caught in flats. So be careful of these things. If you feel like this stuff here is too much of a coincidence, because chances is that might may be the case. And how much of y'all can afford these damn emergencies where you're going to have to replace a tire or two? All right. That shit economically will break you if that happens to you. All right, folks are living so tight right now. Hold on here. Yes, indeed. Smash the like button. All right, and much love to my people here. Good morning. Black first. It's a follow-up to a story we first told you about last November in Westchester. Some call him the nail bandit. Anthony Dyson is accused of throwing nails in the street, resulting in multiple people getting flat tires. Now he's accused of doing it again. WCPO 9 News anchor Brent Buganski live in Hamilton County Jail tonight just outside where Dyson is currently locked up. So, Brett, you found out officers ended up getting clever with how they caught him. Yeah, Craig, these are the type of nails that Anthony Dyson is accused of using. Bear with me. I lost my voice today. I'm OK. But just to give you an idea, they're pretty small, but they could do a lot of damage to the tires here. So the ones that Dyson is accused of doing are a different color here. But Springdale police said they had to get really, you know, kind of clever with how they wanted to catch them. So they said they took these kinds of nails and they ended up painting it with something that it is impossible to see for the human eye under normal lighting conditions. So these are sprayed. They're the same nails, but under the black light, you see the difference basically a spray paint varnish. Detective Sergeant Jeff Hurd with Springdale Police explained how officers caught Anthony Dyson. We got some of those nails from the store. We colored them with the luminescent spray, took them back to the store, said when he comes, sell these nails to him. Officers said Dyson bought the nails last Thursday, and on Sunday, 
Springdale police said officers caught Dyson throwing the nails in two different areas of Springdale. And then officers spotted him doing the same thing in Sharonville and Westchester. He gathered up the nails, gave the black light test, and they matched with the box that he bought that we marked it's actually at 400 pounds of nails since december of 23 which hurt said comes out to about 1600 dollars. i just heard on the news that they got him tom edwards replaced all four of these tires because of flats in the last year that's showing you right there how there was one right in here two weeks ago he got two more in one tire it just has been going on and on and on and it, it's it mounted up to hundreds of dollars worth of cost just to me I know it was thousands for some other folks. Just want to get your side of the story. Man. I throw nails in the road. Dyson did not want to talk to us last December when he was in the Butler County Municipal Court for similar crimes. And while it's a relief for neighbors like Tom, officers said they continue to pursue many more cases of nails in tires. We'd like to think this is the end of it, and that would be great. I don't, he will be out. He was charged once before, and he's continued on, so we don't know. So Dyson is still here at the Hamilton County Jail, but let's just say he ends up posting the bond and getting out. He has another warrant in Westchester, as we were talking about in the story. And as we told you, he's also accused of doing the very same thing with these kinds of nails in Westchester. We are live downtown tonight. Brett Bogansky, WCPO 9 News. Harbor Freight knows on any given day, we're all mechanics. D I. Mm, mm, mm. And it, it's, right, yeah. I just heard on the all right. He had to replace this man. Spent what he spent $1,600 just to damage the roads, dude. Look at this nigga, man. Look at him. All right. And it's all like, I, I, you, the clown ass nigga, you almost feel sorry for him, dude. But then you understand what he's doing and how much money he's costing people. And then you don't feel anything at all but the, the ordinance of justice, dude. All right? It takes certain energies and, and intelligence to go ahead to fight back against the dominant society or what have you through a strategic form. And then you can go ahead and be a loser like this. You are a pariah, dude. All right? No, nigga, you are a damn large, fat-ass bill waiting to happen with a bad hairline, man. And you should be more angry at the person that keep cutting your hair like that, man. All right? That's who you should be upset with. All right? This is, this is, this is a bad deal, in the words of Trump. All right? This is a bad deal when you get your hair cut, nigga, at the chicken shack. All right? You understand me? That's what you call a bad deal. All right, look at that sunroof on the top of his head. And you out here victimizing society, dude. You need, you need your ass whooped. All right, for real. Not incentivized, don't let nobody harm him, dude. Don't you do it. I'm just talking. Tad Todd, we're just joking here. But it ain't no joke about what's on top of his head. All right. God damn it. You look like he possibly could be some, some kin. All right, maybe de-raise uh, people or, or the father, uh, uh, the father's people uh, from um, BMF. All right, something like that. All right, no, if, if if crack was applied and they were in bad shape here. All right, no, man, throw the book at him. You don't have a right to disturb the rest of society because all right, you're a failure. What the ladies don't like you. All right, won't nobody talk to you like that, dude. Look at you. Nobody want to stand around that shit for too long. All right, no, man. Some of you niggas, man, no, man. It's not welcoming for you to be around people without a hat on, man. Put a goddamn hat on. All right, listen to me. All right, you want to avoid uncomfortable situations where people keep looking at you all crazy, trying to run out your face. All right, they ain't trying to be disrespectful and start laughing right then and there. So they're trying to politely move. All right, they keep trying to end the conversation and you standing there. All right, put a hat on, hoss. All right, put a hat on. All right, you better start getting some custom-made do-rags for that noggin, dude. All right, either that or shave it all off. Those are the two, other, two or three options, dude. All right, putting nails in the street is not going to make society more welcoming to you, dude. 
all right? Your barber should be put underneath of federal charges right now, federal charges of assault, all right? This is terrible and abuse, man, psychological abuse, all right? He know what he did to you. He know what he did. That's why I feel like, you know, he's the victim in this case. No, I know he was throwing nails, man, but look at him. Look at him. All right? Look like they didn't drug his ass off to somebody's futon somewhere. All right? No, he stinks. This nigga got goddamn horse flies on his back and everything. They didn't drug him off a futon. All right? And arraigned him in court, man. All right? This is what white supremacy, man, can do to you, man. I, I can't even blame that. This is a tether, dude. Yeah, this is what they can do. They let jokers like this in your fan, in your uh, country here, all No, he can come in. All right? For some reason, his stinking ass can come in here. All right? With this damn moldy ass shirt he got on. It looked like somebody just washed their car with, dude. All right? Oh, like somebody done washed up the, the bottom half of their tires and the bottom half of their car with, dude. All right? Yes. Took the shirt afterwards and just threw it on. Nope. Don't put on a rack, nothing. Just throw the joint on. All right? This is bad, man. Okay? And my other part of the deal, I can't feel that too far. Sorry for your little weird ass. I don't care if it's tax time or whatever he did with it, dude. Yeah, you're a goddamn weirdo. All right? You're disgusted. It's this. He reached in his pocket for $1,600. This is rent money. All right? This is hairline fixing money. All right, no, this is goddamn, all right, uh, 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 tightening up, paying one month worth of rent around uh, in America here. And he took that money to buy 350 pounds worth of nails? Yeah, dude. All right, I see where the sympathy leaves out the back door for most, even with that raggedy ass haircut. All right, whatever that shit is. All right. It looks like a moldy, ripped up SOS pad you got on top of your head. All right. You should get separate crimes for that shit on. You should get separate charges for that shit on top of your head. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. You hope that the time don't run consecutive between that haircut and you. All right, that's my deal here. All right, a menace. All right, causing people thousands, dude. You can't even ride up the block. He done dropped nails everywhere. He spent a uh, hundred one. Uh, hold on, hold on. one thousand six hundred just to f your life up, Halls. Just to make life inconvenient for you, as he has the the worst. All right, no, some of the worst shit ever on top of his head. All right, George Jefferson is true. All right, we've been going in on him for too long here, Hoss. We had to give him a, that, that dude a different identity. We'll just call him Satchmo. For All right, Satchmo. Mm -hmm. And yes, man, I'm slowing down a bit, trying to wait for my old lady to get up in here. Sounds like that's her right here. Hold on, I'm listening. All right, and happy holidays to some. I don't celebrate Easter here today, but happy holidays to some. We are working. All right, I don't do that. I, I, as I tell people here, we're supposed to be to terms into business here. Uh, who's this in here? Moo. Uh, I think I just seen somebody hit the bottom of the list here. All right, there it is right here. Mooku. What's going on? Yeah, George Jefferson. Patricia Slide. Uh, what's going on now? Uh, of course, my sister, I was reading her comment and talking to her back and forth. Uh, get noticed with Nikki. All right. A set rye, Anthony, uh, Malden, RJ, intuitively wise, beast mode. Hey, babe. Sweetheart. All right. I'm just making sure that's you. I'm just making sure it's you. Hold on here. Yeah, y'all give me one second here. Oh, Lord. Give me a second, man. Wow. 
ain't camera on. <laughs> Just making sure you know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like the color. Yeah, because I can't turn it off with the thing on. Let me turn it off. All right. All right. Say close the door. All right. Come well, come closer for me. Wave to the people real quick. Wave to them. Baby. Just wave. Wave at the door. They can Baby. see. All right. Sweetheart. Wait a Close the door. All right, you close. Why are you putting the jacket up? Like, what is... <laughs> All right. All right. I got all my stuff in order here. Thanks to my sweetheart. I'm keep looking over my shoulder. All right. I said, where's she? I know she's going to be here any second now. All right. Anyhow, speaking of, of couples and things like this, something went unfortunate. Um, I want to say this is, might be a Jewish or Indian couple. But old black, uh, old uh, uh, Jewish woman or what have you, she ended up getting slapped um, and she wasn't going for it. All right. Maybe when she was younger, she had to put up with it. But I guess as age uh, has sunk in for the future here. All right. He's slowing down a little bit and she feels game enough to whoop his ass in public here, dude. All right. Now, y'all look and see what happened here. You tell me who won. Aye, aye. I gotta go back. I gotta go back. I gotta go back. Hold on. Fair use. Fair use. Oh man. Man, she worked him over at the end. She got him worked over. All right, what are you gonna do? She was stronger, she went for his lower body, she gave him a couple shots to the body. All right, and then after that, he had to go down, he couldn't handle it. Ah, he was old. This was their version of the Angela Bassett, Lawrence Fishburne, uh, Tina Turner moment. Uh, at the, in the back of the limo, or you could see Ike Turner, Tina Turner, uh, the back of the limo when you seen Ike uh, take his boot off or what have you. All right, and she ended up biting him and. All right, no, it went bad for him. All right, no, Tina went off in the movie. What's love got to do with it? All right, that's what the similarity is to me. All right, she said she ain't gonna take this no more. All right, he's tried to slap her down in public, man. And huh? And then beat you down, man. She said, "Hell, I didn't took forty years of you going upside my head." All right, your gout and high blood pressure is setting up, dude. I'm going to kill you right here. All right? No, I'll gut you right here, all. And, hey, I completely understand. I'm not for you putting your hand. If you a person here in today's relationships where you have to run around here putting your hands on your woman, man, and you don't need to be with her. All right? You don't. That's stressful. All right? Somebody's going to end up getting harmed, bad, possibly killed. And I'm not for the promotion of that, man. All right. Have your tips. Have small arguments and disagreements. It happens with folks. People do not agree about everything every day. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship. But when you start growing to the levels of folks getting, you know, a foot in your ass or you got to get three or four lumps upside your head to be in a relationship, dude, that's not worth anything happening. Uh, that's not worth any having because the happenings of the future is possibly your death, dude. Can't play with that. Are you? Can you speculate how far somebody's going to get mad, quote unquote, kicking your ass? No, you can't, Hawks. Even in the line for certain people trying to make excuses for filthy bastards here because they made 
deliver so good on certain things. Now, I've heard uh, desperate folks here come here and say, well, you know, he takes care of the family, this, that, and then the third here, he provides. Well, that's why when he gets mad, then no, that ain't the thing. All right. Because for me hearing that from anybody, I tell my sisters here all day long, I would rather you be alive here to tell your story and well with an opportunity for you to go ahead to do things a different way. All right. For you, other than for you to go ahead to decide your fate to say, I have to take an ass kicking every day. No, you don't. All right. You don't. All right. And for the U.S. at least, that's why I pointed to another country there. Those things are not smiled upon. All right. You are denounced and you can very well get your ass kicked on the streets, in these prisons, anywhere for attacking women and children, dude. Just a fact here. Now, I want to go ahead and, and switch codes here. All right. I'm trying to do so much here at once. Y'all can hear me moving around in the background. Uh, this was the dude I told you here that was spilling the beans on Hollywood. And then you had an old white woman that reprimanded him like, hey, shut the hell up. You shouldn't be telling on white men. All right. No, they, they are adamant. Diamond Society is very adamant about staying on code, staying on code, keeping others on code and punishing you for being off code. And at this point in time, he was outing out all these little dirty pedophiles that have been swept underneath the bridge. All right. Hold on. I'm saying that there are people that were the people that did this to both me and Corey yeah. that are still working. They're still out there. And they're some of the richest, most powerful people in this business. And they are. And they do not want me saying what I'm saying right now. Are, are you saying that they're pedophiles? Yes. And that yes. they're still in this business? Yes. That's what, yeah, and that's what you were saying wow. in your book. When you that's talk to, talk about, yeah. When yeah. you talk to and parents. They don't want me here right now. Trust Corey, me. They there, want me dead. There are a lot of parents out yeah. here who want to put their kids in this in this business. They, their kids are cute. They're great actors. Da, da, da. What would you say to a parent who just has the best of intentions who's coming here with their child? Mm -hmm. If um, you're saying that there's a lot of predators in this industry. It's a many feathered bird. OK, be careful what you wish for. That's what I'll tell you. You know, don't go into it with naivety. Don't go into it thinking that it's all roses and You're sunglasses. You're damaging an entire industry. I'm sorry, I'm not up. trying to. That... I'm just trying to say that it's a very important, serious topic. You said that there was one gentleman in the industry who did not take advantage of you. He was not a pedophile. That's you said right. it was yes. Michael Jackson. Of all people. Huh. The camera ain't on. Here. Can't see. Here. There you go, back. All right. As y'all see, she was sitting there talking about you're damaging an entire industry. Not the, the Me Too Times Up speak where this is horrible. You know, how could some monster around here do such a thing to you? We need to find that person and give them punishment. It's no, we have to protect white supremacy as a whole. And why are you telling on an entire industry of powerful individuals here that are my friends. Huh? No, that are my friends. I know they're degenerates, but you need to understand that if white men here don't run power, then that means some other group is. So why are you sitting up in here, all right, letting out the deep, dark, dirty secrets in here in which we participate in, and we also use to punish others. What are you doing running your mouth about this, dude? Huh? And 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 in the essence of this, it was damn near like an open threat. All right? No, I got to call it what it is for this old white woman sizing him up like this. Because I'm sure she knows that the allegations in which he's making is true. Because if she didn't, she wouldn't have feel so threatened to tell him you're targeting an entire industry. Well, what does it mean anything to you if you can still label that guy a quack? Maybe you can't. I'm saying that there are people that were the people that did this to both me and Corey yeah. that are still working. They're still out there. And they're some of the richest, most powerful people in this business. And they, are and they do not want there. me saying what I'm saying right now. Are you saying that they're pedophiles? Yes. And that yes. they're still in this business? Yes. That's what, yeah, and that's what you were saying wow. in your book. When you that's talk to, talk about, yeah. Yeah. When you talk to parents. They don't want me here right now. Trust Corey, me. They there, want me dead. There are a lot of parents out here yeah. who want to put their kids in this in this business. They, their kids are cute. They're great actors. Da, da, da. What would you say to a parent who just has the best of intentions who's coming here with their child? Mm -hmm. If um, you're saying that there's a lot of predators in this industry. It's a many-feathered bird. 
Okay, be careful what you wish for. That's what I'll tell you. You know, don't go into it with naivety. Don't go into it thinking that it's all roses and You're sunglasses. You're damaging an entire industry. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to. Said... And there it is. Hold on. An entire industry. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to. That... I'm just trying to. Do you see how she's looking at him? No, I, I'm looking at the cases of sympathy for the sexual assault victims, not protecting the industry of dirtbags because they possess so much money and opportunity. So-called people that you see around here don't only have as much power as the people give to them. I often divert these circumstances and standards if people put power where money is at, which is a complete lie here, Halls. If overnight they tell you that your currency is worth nothing, then how much power is into that money? Nothing. All right. The people themselves, which meaning in the terms of white society, sitting back here administering power and who gets what and how a Africana can bring his ass over here from South Africa and become the richest man in the world funded by our taxpayers dollars. This is what I mean. All right? Not because he's the, the, the sharpest and the brightest and he just has the best ideas because it's about white power ruling educational standards wise here family white men are not the smartest men on the planet all right somewhere in the fact is i believe they have nigeria or what have you over there some of the smarter people some of the cases of the asians here in the, in the state here have been some of the smarter people uh allegedly let me say but i know for damn sure it ain't white folks but yet and still when you talk about economic power and who's holding the most money and resources are in more than one lane, you can see that very fruit are uh, in a white man, period. Do you think that's by happen since? No. All right. It's not about in, in the root of intelligence when you're talking about uh white supremacy. It's about maintaining power here, Hoss, and un being able to get unearned benefits. All right. We can be savage, but no one else can. All right. No, we'll come in here and and uh, Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, this whole situation and victimize any and everybody we want to. If you do, as a black person, in any case at least we think you have, you will be the face of this. What's up, Stay Woke? I see you up in here. Dre Harden, good morning. Geraldine Warren, what's going on, family? I see you. You're always in attendance. All right. You are always here, sister, and we appreciate you. All right. Yes, you are. All right. Speaking of the dominant society's emboldenedness, man accused of raping and mutilating Orlando woman allegedly tries to stop her from testifying. It's not enough. Huh? No, that you sexually assaulted her and uh, some type of way, mutil uh, 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 the, the mutilation of her. That ain't enough. All right. No, then I got to come up here like the mob. All right, with intimidation tactics, hey, yeah, I, I don't think it's the safest thing for you to testify. This guy has a big ass tattoo on his forehead, all right, looking like he could be some kin to Amber Rose. I don't know, Hawks. All right, hold on here. We'll be right back here in a second. Bottom line. The man accused of raping and mutilating a woman in Orlando faces new charges this afternoon. Now, we first told you about Bruce Whitehead when he was arrested for the attack two years ago. Mm -hmm. West Jews Bob Hazen is at the Orange County Courthouse and reports Whitehead is now accused of trying to stop the victim from testifying. That accused rapist had a hearing here today and we found out when his trial will be. And we also found out he's been trying to get the case dismissed. Investigators say Bruce Wayne Whitehead carried out a brutal rape on a woman that he picked up on South Orange Blossom Trail in 2022, sexually assaulting her, cutting her with a knife, burning her, and even trying to stab her in the chest. An Orange County detective called him a monster. Whitehead's been in jail since he was arrested and last week back in front of a judge facing new charges that he tried to get someone to, quote, take care of the victim. I am going to um, order that you not have any contact with any of the alleged victims or witnesses in any cases that are currently pending against you. Court documents show a state attorney got worried that Whitehead was trying to pay a fellow inmate who was going to get out soon to kill the victim. But later they realized he was trying to pay her to not testify against him. And he believed the case would then be dropped. The criminal complaint says Whitehead told the other inmate he, quote, 
had been filing Nelson hearings and other motions trying to delay the trial process for his case so he can buy time for the inmate to get out of jail and pay the victim to not show up to court. He allegedly gave that other inmate a note with the victim's name, address, and other. Come on, dude. I got to go back now. Sorry. I got to go. Come on, dude. It's how dirty they are. How the hell can he do all this? I now heard the context of flying a kite. And if you don't understand for those circumstances, it's tying a string to something, possibly a torn bed sheet in prison, wrapping a note up in here and then lowering it down here. All right. Uh, past possible floors or whatever until you get to the territory that you need to in order for that person to get that note. That is the terms there. Uh, uh, of flying a kite. No, I shouldn't be going ahead to give all the context to some of these things. We do need to keep some of our information to ourselves, but I do want individual sound on some of the things that we are running across when you talk about some of this jail speak and talk here. All right, hold on here. The man accused of raping and mutilating a woman in Orlando faces new charges this afternoon. Now, we first told you about Bruce Whitehead when he was arrested for the attack two years ago. West Jews Bob Hazen is at the Orange County Courthouse and reports Whitehead is now accused of trying to stop the victim from testifying. That accused rapist had a hearing here today and we found out when his trial will be. And we also found out he's been trying to get the case dismissed. Investigators say Bruce Wayne Whitehead carried out a brutal rape on a woman that he picked up on South Orange Blossom Trail in 2022, sexually assaulting her, cutting her with a knife, burning her, and even trying to stab her in the chest. In Orange County, come on, dude. All right. And it's just cases, it sounds like the attempted murder charges weren't pressed on him, too. Look at him. All right, like you got the damn Bible or holy scriptures on his forehead. This nigga, this Chris White man's crazy as cat shit. All right, you don't need to see the outside of anything. And I'm talking about my women not being that protected out here, Hoss. I'm seeing this every week, left and right, all right, by non black people here, Hoss. Or should I say non freedmen? All right, no, I see what the essence of y'all problems are here, dude. All right, it is the savage, barbarian white man that you told us to look, I have superior rights. All right, and I can do whatever the hell I want to, from mutilation to burning people, all right, the X, Y, Z here, to, to sexual assaults, in which the moment after this pops off, I can guarantee that the judge is going to give me some soft bail here. Check the tether out New York City, punching young ladies in the face, all right? They made a habit of these assaults from these young ladies that given all the damn uh, uh, jokers who are, who are issuing out these ass whoopings or random punches in the face, misdemeanor assaults. So what's a, a, a stopping them from punching somebody else in the face, knowing that you're going to go ahead to give so much of slim charges on the books? Those are not real punishments, Duke. All right. This is like putting uh, pacifiers in here and band-aids, all right, rather to a situation that needs stitches. County detective called him a monster. Whitehead's been in jail since he was arrested and last week back in front of a judge facing new charges that he tried to get someone to, quote, take care of the victim. I am going to um, order that you not have any contact with any of the alleged victims or witnesses in any cases that are currently pending against you. Court documents show a state attorney got worried that Whitehead was trying to pay a fellow inmate who was going to get out soon to kill the victim. But later, they realized he was trying to pay her to not testify against him, and he believed the case would then be dropped. The criminal complaint says Whitehead told the other inmate he, quote, had been filing Nelson hearings and other motions trying to delay the trial process for his case so he can buy time for the inmate to get out of jail and pay the victim to not show up to court. He allegedly gave that other inmate a note with the victim's name, address, and other information. The inmate told investigators he feared that if he didn't pay off the victim, Whitehead would try to get her murdered. Whitehead now. And I believe Whitehead has those type of ties. With that tattoo, I think he's around all types of cartels and uh, Asian little meth heads and drug houses. Yeah. No, he's the guy they'll let right through the front door. All right. His activities? Shit. Yeah. Now facing charges for witness tampering. His lawyer was in court today. Whitehead was not, but the judge scheduled the trial for the sexual battery charges to start in May. In Orlando, Bob Hazen, West 2 News. Mm, mm, mm. 
sexual battery, man. All this is laughable. And I want to go over here to the cases of the illegals. Not to say I put anything small on the turmoil. It is laughable with the court systems thinking that they're solving something here for these women when you understand that you've literally let these bastards right, brother, right back out here into the streets or the ones that you haven't, are right, they don't have anything long around them being able to get free. And the fact that you put this news story out with he's got personal connections and they can tie the dots and the connections to that lady and who she is, they may take care of it for him. All right. No, we don't know what type of ties he has. This man was reaching out to somebody here in prison. But now as you put it out on national news that he's done this, if he does have any other allies around here and you're convinced that he can go out to commit murder, which I am based upon him stabbing that woman or at least trying to stab her in the chest, burning her, all this. Yeah, he's capable of murder. He just wasn't successful. All right. He's damn sure capable of it. You put that woman in more harm's way in my books, dude. That's it. Especially with the petty charges. What, what's the case? All right. If I get caught, they ain't really going to do nothing to me like that. I'm white. All right. Speaking of if I get caught, ICE uh, details everybody uh, routine and hold, hold, hold on. Routine in Boston track down migrants, rallying into something to track down uh, migrants. Trying to get this context down. A combative MS-13 gang member from El Salvador charged with a slew of violent crimes. And y'all check this out, man. When they say combative, they mean combative. They mean criminal. To the fullest extent, they mean RICO charges. And that's what the hell this shit smell. The same case, in the essence, when they said it was going to be RICO charges for the drone group. Um, I want to say out of Texas, if it was, somebody can go ahead to remind me. All right. It might have been Texas. It could have been Memphis. It was one of these states here, but they caught the a drone owner here, a uh, repair shop, who was helping take uh, take in, in all types of drones through dozens of uh, prisons, dropping narcotics off, dude. Yeah, they came over here to America to make a dollar, but they haven't come over here to make a, a money in America legally. And in the context of that illegal work, a lot of these jokers are willing to do whatever they have to, from Cadillac converter theft, all right, to stealing of anyone's cell phone here, Halls, to uh, breaking and entering into people's homes, all right, you name it. If there is an industry in which these illegals can collect, all right, scamming you over the phone, they will attach themselves to it. Huh? Selling lemons and bad paperwork or bad vehicles off to people, whatever they can do. Giving you gas that's watered down. No, shout out to the Indian community in America. Yeah. I right. literally had a bunch of damn cars lined up because the, the jokers in here were stealing money. One of the guys has said his gas pump was still uh, full of certain parts were full of water. All right. Due to one of these damn uh, gas stations where the damn Indians run this joint. They were literally watering down the gas halls. All right. Now, this is what we're faced with when you let lawless people inside of America set up a business, go unscathed. You're not watching and reprimanding any of this shit. And by the time that you show up, it's so much damn nefarious uh, laws being broken that you got to have to lock up everybody. But the simple equation that is usually not attached to these, uh, excuse me, these uh, uh, rounding ups, as you should say, all right, or these arrests are RICO charges. All right, I really want to put that there. The RICO charges are what is not connected to these groups getting uh, snatched up. For example, the Cadillac converter theft that was going on in America was a billion dollar industry. A lot more money than what YSL can accumulate. All right. No, or Casanova or ARAB. All right. No, or YFN Lucci. All right. But they're all open to get a goddamn RICO. These folks were generating billions. No RICO charges. Officers then arrested this.
All right, hold on. Let me give a shout out to the brother B O G in the house. All right, the good brother Shabazz, American Freedman. All right, shout out uh, uh, to the sister in here. All right, uh, uh, Ariel, shout out to you, sweetheart. All right, good afternoon to you, blessings. All right, prosperity to the channel. Thank you, sweetheart. All right, much love to you. All right, sister Warren, stay woke. Dre Harden, Moo Souk. I hope I'm saying this right. Um, get noticed with Nikki, Patricia Slide, A Set Ride, JRJ, uh, Anthony Malden, uh, Intuitively Wise, and Beast Mode. Thank you and welcome to the good people. Yes, of course, contribute here, Halls, to the channel. All right. Yes, that goes for it, it, everyone here. I'm speaking to everyone here. All right. Yes, the war chat. The war chest needs to be supported here. All right. Now we're, we're running low within the communication aspects of that period. All right. I can't say it enough here, Hoss. All right. We can only roll as far as our people is willing to support. Lip service is not service here, Hoss. And without any lines of commission from the people here, Hoss, we sink. All right. Dominant society, don't hesitate. Daniel, Penny, anyone of these white supremacists over here rather killing us to pay a tax to make sure that they can keep doing that to us, at least for the services, all right, of whatever you have rendered for your soldiers out here in the streets, make sure that they well here, all right, because we're going to be here until we're in the ground, all right? No, lip service isn't service, and I am a, a high person of Show me the, the essence of uh, where you spend your money at, your hard-earned dollar, and I'm going to show you what you love and validate and appreciate here, Hawks. All right. That is my sentiment dealing with any person here in the world, not lip service, dude. People will tell you anything. All right. No, a person will tell you anything. All right. When I can look up and I say, all right, man, that's a valid support. You know what? That person actually cares. They riding. All right. That's when I can stamp it there. All right. I'm just a person like you. You understand? Absolutely. Now, let's get back to these jokers. This Brazilian man charged with five counts of aggravated rape of a child. How are you guys not notified about a child rapist being released? Unfortunately, in Massachusetts, that's how it is with most of these sanctuary jurisdictions. A short time later, ICE took down their final target, a Brazilian gang member also charged with child rape. Just this morning today, four accused child rapists and one MS-13 gang member. Those are the kind of people you're going after. That, that's every day up here in, in Boston. If those are the public safety threats that we really want to get off the street. It was a great day for the team. So that's five public safety threats that are in the community. Could have, go ahead and victimize anyone else. Good morning, senators and citizens. I stand before you a heartbroken man. Part of my purpose has been taken. God gave me a beautiful daughter to father, protect, provide for and nurture a man with an evil heart stole her life. And let me say something here, respectful to the people. And I know everybody here means me well. And I want to say that please don't put my cash up, up cash app up in the comment section. I understand folks are trying to be helpful, but at the, and the labels are feeling antagonized here. This is the brokest society that you can go ahead to be running in when, as far as you doing public service. And I don't mind that. But do not put my cash app up in here, Halls, especially if you have not contributed here today or anything else here, dude. All right. And not not in, in my mind. I don't want to block somebody for no reason. So let's make sure that everybody be accountable for their own record. All right. That's it. I'm, you're not doing me no favors by putting that up in the comment section. I'm looking at you side eye. All right. Let's keep rolling. I got to be honest this morning. Life. He was in this country and in this state illegally. Ow. My vision for every senator in this chamber is that you protect citizens. Lake and Riley should still be alive. The reason that she is not alive is because of Joe Biden's open borders and because of the Democrats' policies refusing to secure our border. There is a simple but for causation. The murderer took the life of that 22-year-old beautiful young woman, a nursing student in Georgia out jogging, 
And if that young lady wasn't white, would we even be here? Or would you even see Ted Cruz's face? The answer is no. All right. And it went from Mrs. Riley um, in her circumstances being assaulted to a bill being able to be passed to, for a talking point for Republicans. Now, do I think this is improper in strategy? No, I don't. I'm going to point to why. Because the people in the masses in here in the selection here of something politically all right, can see what you have received and what you haven't received, what's going to this group and then what's being denied to you. And when you see that access float in here, all right, from the Shia Lane, all right, of the government being able to have bipartisanship, same stuff that they fight when it comes among you here, Hawks. You start to look at things side. I do not disagree with this bill once again here. All right. Not at all. And this looks like Rashida L. Shout out to Rashida L in the cash app. Appreciate you, sister. All right. She understands lip service is not service. All right. Thank you for supporting the war chest. We ain't been receiving a whole lot of support around here at all. All right. And I shouldn't have to say anything. We had him in custody. He was apprehended in El Paso, crossing illegally from Venezuela. Had Joe Biden simply followed the law, what would have happened is that murderer would have been put on a plane, flown back to Venezuela, and Lake and Riley would still be alive. All right. Hey, Rashida L., to all of whatever the brothers and sisters here, Halls, the respect I would say to you is mutual. All right. Very much mutual. All right. Lip service ain't service. You take Ted Cruz off my screen. When I see something touches my nerve here, sometimes I sit here and I cope with thoughts and I try to let things sit through. And then other things in the case, it's necessary for me to say something because it's like, I don't operate off of phony, man. I don't. All right. Even me in my day to day life, I don't have a whole lot of relationships because people are cool with you till a certain extent, dude. To a certain extent, and life has taught me a valuable lesson at a short period of time. Don't value relationships that are not worth anything to mutual parties here. All right. In other words, Duke, all right, it is in my interest to go ahead to look out for the masses who have me in mind as well. All right. Now, I'm not here to build a nigga here to success where you go ahead and throw a nigga in the dumpster. That ain't me. All right. Hell no. Am I here to go ahead and do work amongst the people every day until I die? All right. But I ain't Sam Sausage here. All right. That ain't me. You ain't going to see me devoting uh, time, attention, and and, uh, energy to a subject matter in reference that doesn't have the same respect for me. All right, let me, let me roar that here. All right, now y'all gonna have to feel some of this right here because it's real. All right, I don't operate underneath a phony. Please don't ask me to. All right, let's get over here into the context of black voters weighing options. It's 2024 elections. All right, uh, enthusiasm wanes. All right, as this starts to spread and and as far as enthusiasm is concerned you can't be enthusiastic about something that is non-beneficial to you black votes in america have went to everybody except for black people your vote quintessentially has opened the door for hostile illegals here to displace your lands in america all right yes indeed All right. Shouts out to Jonah Perry Woods. Much love to you. And as I take to you, the respect there is mutual as well as the love. All right. Yes, indeed. In the cash app. Let's go ahead to keep rolling. The upcoming 2024 election, President Joe Biden faces challenges with. Hold on. Fair use. Fair use. This is coming out of the Washington Post. And Democrats poor support base, black and young voters. Well, I think in 2024, the black vote is going to be pretty powerful to uh, move the uh, 
biting over the edge again. And to have these two guys, the only choices is kind of difficult. I actually, I don't have the confidence in either of the presidential candidates. I am kind of concerned about the candidates that we have, especially as a college student that goes to an HBCU. I think black people are tired. A lot of them tired. And I think either way it goes, we still gonna wind up in the same, with the same results. The usual lead Democrats hold among young voters narrows to just 8%, the slimmest since 2005. Their advantage among Black Americans has dwindled nearly 20% over the past three years, dropping from 66 to 47, signaling a critical change in voter sentiment. There are issues that African Americans share with all Americans with regards to inflation, with regards to the state of the economy. The issue of policing and criminal justice reform has not been moved forward. Through federal it's reparations, sir. Oh, let me open this grape soda here. Pardon me. It's reparations, sir. All right. Because if everybody, or at least the 45 uh, plus million freedmen, are not criminals, right? Just hear me out. If they're not criminals, then what the hell is the criminal justice reform? How is that a benefit to me? All right. No, I'm not. It's not my aspects to be locked up. What is drug court or any of these other things good for me if I'm not a damn addict? All right. P politicians come to Freedman as if your black ass is supposed to already have been in trouble. You are already going through something. This white supremacist system has locked in on you and you should already have two or three charges on you. All right. Where the criminal justice system is about to give you its year to day version of the three strikes deal. All right. This is how they go ahead and speak to you. And you shouldn't be in that position, especially when I'm underlining that. Who else? Who else? Uh, does the politicians walk up to here as a group and start talking about criminal justice reform, too? Huh? And uh, giving out money for colleges and all this bullcrap incentives or, or or do they just march to these other groups and start pointing to where the bag is all right i'm asking dude is that how they speak to these other groups they keep staring at their percentages and wondering why you're getting your behind kick you're looking up and you see caravans at the border every single day here halts with raggedy, ridiculous stories, and millions have flooded America since the beginning of Biden's administration, millions of illegals, all right? This is what you have here, all right? And out of that pile of trash that they've piled up, all right, a lot of those jokers, majority, have no type of access to be able to benefit them politically, meaning they can't vote, dude. All right. This is the time that you go ahead and give them the business, because if you fast forward what, 15 years from now, you may not have the opportunity to do so. All right. Sitting down for black people is one of the most important deals here year to date, because the equation of that politically is to take the emphasis completely off of the electoral system as far as it concerns Democrats. All right. Cut them off. And I said, that's not for you to recycle your vote to a Republican. They've offered you nothing evil, but chop the head off the snake. All right. If this joint here is dead, all right, and they have to kick it all the way in the mud to where as you go ahead and see an extreme a blue wave and the Democratic Party doesn't really even have a party anymore. All right. Or you're close to getting a, a, annihilated. Then maybe they'll get the message. All right. The collapse upon our foundation of being able to hold these bastards accountable is to see a black person still willing to get up and stand in some long ass line for some white supremacists and hand in their damn support here to get nothing on the back end. So you can watch illegals eat, dude. So you can watch this one and that one over there. All right. Get their face full. All right. As your community continues to go without proper parks and basketball courts and uh, boys and girls clubs and extracurricular activities and pools and different things that the kids can get into. All right. No, uh, other than the crime side of things in which white society depends on when it comes to the uh, poor class here in America. All right. Yes, indeed. All right. This is where they go at and to look for things as far as what, what they call it here. The, um, 
the, the fishing barrel. This is where they go ahead to, 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 to shoot and throw fish at here, Hawks. They come back in here to collect, let some folks sit back and, and bubble up a little bit. And when it gets time for them to feel like they fatten a frog, in comes your door getting kicked in. All right. And that's how it cycles through for Negroes all around America. There is no sufficient Negro here that you've seen where at some point the police ain't going to come knock on your door. All right. I don't care how long they'll let the investigation rain or how slick you think you are with some of the codes that you have here. All right. America has played upon some of the greatest strategies, period, to keep location upon each and every citizen existing in here. And that starts with your damn cell phone. Yep. I mean, I, I would go ahead to agree to the circumstances to say, hey, why else would you post up in every black community? All right. No. With some woman or some male or one or both in a little skinny ass fold out table in a box trying to give phones out to any and everybody who's receiving government assistance, free phones for a year. Ain't a such goddamn thing as free. There's no such thing as free. It's not, dude. All right, why are they handing you this guy? You got unlimited internet. They're giving you a new iPhone or a new uh, uh, Android. That's free. Huh? You better, you better wisen up, dude. All right, don't nobody love you like that, dude. You ain't that cool. All right, you're not that smooth. For some of you niggas, don't nobody get along with you. All right, don't nobody want to give you anything for free. Smarten up. Why do you think you have it, dude? That's to keep tabs on your ass and everything that you're dabbling in, dude, whatever you're doing. All right, so when it's time to run a formal investigation on a lot of these little flim-flam Negroes here, they don't have to look too far other than your damn cell phone, in which they're paying for for a year anyway. So it's technically, it's their phone. You're just borrowing it. Hmm. Democrats hold among young voters narrow, it's just 8%, the slimmest since 2005. Their advantage among Black Americans has dwindled nearly 20% over the past three years, dropping from 66 to 47, signaling a critical change in voter sentiment. There are issues that African Americans share with all Americans with regards to inflation, with regards to the state of the economy. The issue of policing and criminal justice reform has not been moved forward through federal legislation. Some of those economic issues, but racial justice issues are, are foremost on black voters' minds. In fairness to the Biden administration, they will, they will argue, we have tried and we will continue to try. We just haven't made as much progress. Um, but younger black voters might argue that's not progress enough or progress at all. So I'm sure that there are those who are saying that why didn't Biden push John Lewis' bill as hard as he pushed it the last month? Why didn't he push it six months ago? There's a timing that is not one's own choice. It's somewhat dictated by events that are happening in country and around the world as to what focus is. So it's just going to take a little bit of time. President Biden faces a consequential battle in retaining support, particularly in swing states with significant Black voter populations like Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. Dissatisfied. 14.1% Michigan. Michigan is a predominantly Black spot here. Wisconsin has these similarities. Georgia has these similarities. All right, for PA, I can't necessarily say that, but you can see the, from the percentages over here, this is not a joke here. All right. Uh, Joe Biden's term. Uh, not a joke. Not a joke upon you getting your ass whooped. All right. And the fact that you're running around here crusty and decrepit and off point. All right. Anytime you have Italy doing comedy skits on the way that you move around physically on you being old, senile, dementia, bad knees, dried up, pausing in the middle of speeches in the behind podiums, all these things destroy credibility when you talk about competency and willing to form a sentence, dude. All right. We can't depend upon you to do every damn thing else here, Hoss, if you're just so goddamn incoherent. All right. And, and on grandpa mode, 65 percent of the time we understand for the circumstances and the illness of dementia, your circumstances will get worse and which leads uh, black society and the rest of the world here to their demise. Well, what do you mean your demise? Kamala Harris. All right. What, what could be worse than Joe Biden? Kamala Harris. All right. 
No, the Negroes need to stop sitting around looking stupid, talking about some, whoa, what could be worse than that? All right. No, the terms of, of white supremacy here is, is thorough written out for tethers, boot licking coons and folks who don't identify as black. And there's one rule that sits out for me. No, just one. All right. For these coons, Halls, their alignment with white society, the ideology is that I have to be three times as brutal as these white supremacists here to continue to have their favor and support. All right? No, that is the mind of a sellout, dude. Satisfaction among some black voters could lead to decreased turnout, creating a potential opening for the Trump campaign. There is actually a lot of polling to suggest that Trump has improved among previous Republican nominees, specifically with black men. The Trump campaign thinks, you know, they're under no illusion that they're going to win a majority of, of black voters or black men. But if they can improve just a little bit, just a few points, either by uh, having those voters stay home and not turn out for Joe Biden, or even by persuading them to vote for Donald Trump, that could actually be decisive in a very close election. Both campaigns are stepping up efforts to court these crucial demographics. The Biden-Harris campaign has launched a $30 million advertising initiative targeting Black and young voters in swing states. This follows a $25 million effort in late 2023. $30 million given to what? Bootlegs? To cats we don't support? To unfavorables and undesirables? They'll take $30 million and throw it in the gutter, dude. <laughs> Following radio stations and... Clowns who don't lead the black masses. What did y'all do? Take that money and put it in Fat Joe's pockets and Roe Timmy and all of these clowns that y'all incentivized to come in here to say that they created hip hop. What was that? I would like to know directly who received that 30 million because it damn sure didn't move anything. And all we got for our damn money, all right, was Fat Joe every five minutes, man. All right, no, every time you look up, you've seen his little tan ball head somewhere. All right? Like, God damn, Halls. No, ain't nobody sent him in here. He's looking over at you like he's some godfather of something, dude. Get your whack ass out of here, man. Pun ain't alive no more. All right? God rest the dead. Pun is dead. He ain't alive no more. We rock with his rapping, not yours. All right? You're a goddamn bottom feeder is what you are. You're a bottom feeder. When Lil Wayne was hot, you blood sucking off him. R. Kelly, you were blood sucking. You're, you're a bottom feeder. Ja Rule had the ears that you was blood sucking off of him. You're a bottom feeder, Joe. All right? No, when Jeezy came out here smoking dope boys, coke, he comes over there. All right? No, it, it, you, you, you see how white society has managed to keep him keeped up with every damn thing, though the lyrics... All right, does not match the lyricist nor the times here, Hoss, of him even being able to goddamn be in the facility. In other words, what the hell are you doing here? All right, yeah, that pancake nigga, you talking about $30 million, host a BET Awards twice. There was no heavy demand for him to come back, but you're trying to fit a narrative, and that's why you're losing. All right, the Americans here do not support your un American agenda, dude. We don't. All right. You want all this swallowing and degradation. You might as well get your ass up and go in, in their countries and go live with them, dude. All right. Don't bring all of them to our residence because we don't want them in our house. Advertising initiative targeting black and young voters in swing states. This follows a $25 million effort in late 2023. Meanwhile, the Trump campaign is seizing on economic grievances and touting criminal justice reform efforts to sway black voters. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. It's, it's been pretty amazing, but it possibly, I don't know, maybe there's something there. With months to go into the election and various factors at play, only time will tell how this dynamic landscape will shape the outcome in November. Book your first cleaning today for only $19. And that's that, uh, all right? Which is everything I told you here would be here, all right? 
yes, an unpopular election where you have taken and demonized one party and took them to the fences and tried to make the most unpopular president in, one in presidential history give him validation. You cannot go ahead all right, to spice up things here that are completely uh, disgusting to the rest of society here, especially when America wants him out, man. No, America wants Joe Biden out of here. All right. Then I'm not saying they're craving for Trump. I don't speak the coon language. Oh, well, the answer is to get Donald Trump in here. No, the answer is a black agenda. The answer is reparations. The answer is the replacement of white supremacy with a system of justice. That is the only answer. Black people can't afford here year to date to continue to be the moral conscience. All right. For a society who doesn't have one. I am only guilty here in these pretenses, dude, if I get caught. No, if somebody sees me directly doing something that ain't right, then I'm guilty. Other than that, you need to submit and I need to be in charge of every damn thing you have as a white man here. All right. This has bled and destroyed uh, great parts of the country and the criminal justice system as a whole. If police chiefs won't stop. All right. Traveling cops. All right. State reps say tougher laws are needed. Tougher laws for what exactly? We're gonna go over that in a second, in a minute. Yesterday, the seven investigators showed you how one police officer repeatedly accused of egregious misconduct was able to jump from department to department. Well, now current and former lawmakers are calling to say that if police departments don't crack down on traveling cops, Lansing should. Here's seven investigator Ross Jones with more. Once I saw the story, it, it just reconfirmed what I've been trying to do. It's disturbing and it's gone on for far too long. State Representative Tyrone Carter is reacting to a seven action news investigation revealing how one police officer with a startling history of misconduct was able to jump from department to department. Throughout his career, Officer Mark Aldrich would be accused of dishonesty, road rage, engaging in sex acts with a woman he'd arrested and destroying evidence. But it didn't stop him from finding badges in four different communities. If you know that you're going to hire a person with a checkered background, then the liability is really on you. In 2020, Carter introduced legislation that would have created a statewide database tracking police misconduct. The goal, he said, was to make it easier for departments to know exactly who they were hiring. There needs to be that level of credibility that has eroded over time. Um, we, we have an opportunity to get some of that back. But the bill stalled over concerns that a database might be too tedious to maintain for departments. Carter now says he's preparing to reintroduce the legislation soon. But before any new laws are passed, some police chiefs may want to start following the laws already on the books. When a police officer separates from an agency today, his or her department is required to report how they left. Was it in good standing, while under investigation, under criminal charges, or in lieu of termination? In Aldridge's case, he left as Carlton's police chief said he suspected him of deleting body cam footage from a complaint filed against him. But the chief stopped investigating because Aldrich had resigned and he reported. And that was also more charges to be able to charge him directly. So by them saying he stopped investigating, he declined or at least he made a deal with him. Look, if you don't make this process harder than what it has to be, man. I'm not even going to give you any charges, dude. We'll just let you leave if you make this easier on us. We already got you dead to rights. We know you deleted footage off of this body cam. And the moment I send this up to so-and-so to get what you have uh, deleted and everything else, this will have to be presented to the public. And at that point, you're going to have to be charged. So before I do this, just get your punk ass out of here, all right, and make it easy for the department. Now, here is the flip of the bad side. I'm glad I went over parts of this yesterday as they're giving you the story here again and to talk about what's going to be done about it. Um, that same officer you had there in front of you, all right, this guy still slapped a good recommendation on the dude's paperwork. So he was informed that this 
piece of crap here was getting ready to be hired at another police department, I believe for the third time at this point, and he gave the dude a good recommendation. He could have said, no, this guy is hazardous. He's untrustworthy. He's a liar. He's a pariah. You know, things you're actually supposed to do. All right. But instead, he put declarations on this man's reputation all right, to not warn this next police department what's, what's next here. Obviously, he's a degenerate. He's incompetent. He's untrustworthy. He has attitude and white supremacist issues. All right. No, he, he needs to be in the inside of a prison cell, not wearing a badge. All right. This joker is pulling up in front of women and children and flashing his pistol due to road rage. This is what type of a race, a race soldier you're dealing with here. Hired by four police departments. Investigating because Aldrich had resigned and he reported to M. Coles, the commission that licenses officers, that he left in good standing. I ain't got to do that, dog. It was a similar story with Detroit officer Kyrie Roberts, seen punching a man without justification back in the summer of 2021. He was not truthful with investigators, so DPD prepared to fire Roberts. But while he was under investigation, Roberts resigned, and DPD incorrectly reported that he left in good stand. Right, because he attacked a black person. And kicking a black person's hind paws as a race soldier as long as you didn't kill him, all right? No, as long as Jordan Neely, as long as you didn't murder him, all right, deserve stripes in a badge of honor, huh? If we don't have to face any serious lines of disgrace as a police department, well, you leave here with honors. So therefore, you can retrieve uh, gainful employment back in law enforcement somewhere else at another department. That's what that signing off is for. No, to make sure that when you would like to land back into this level of business here in America, you are certified and stamped by the people higher up. And DPD incorrectly reported that he left in good standing. That made it easier for East Point police to give him a badge. Huh? So some of these same tethers and nigga hating damn boot licking jokers that you have here. All right. No, these are tethers here. They can't stand us. We live rent free. You do anything here, you see one of these damn boot licks sneaking in a comment section trying to be funny. All right. These weird ass cats. You put a uh, police uniform on them. All right. They're only going to be more of what they already are. All right. They understand for these lanes for this little coon. All right. Yes. I have a free pass against every person here. As long as they, as long as they can't identify as white, I can abuse them. That is the ideology of these boot licking dangerous niggas. All right. Yes. Nope. As long as you ain't white. I can do anything I want to to you, Hawks, and this system is willing to back me. All right? Yes, indeed. Even down to the structures of murder. Just keep rolling. Oh, he was hired by another police department here. All right? For as you see, clearly violating a brother's constitutional rights here during a damn, excuse me, uh during a uh a protest there and i remember that specifically because it was a lot of protests that had took place at that uh, particular time all right this is where i'm at right here a lot of them all right so during that particular motion in time you had plenty of black folks riding in the streets and doing what they had to do to take care of business this guy wasn't no threat to anybody all right but what did i just warn you about talking about that other funky race soldier earlier Huh? No, I have to prove. No, I was talking about Kamala Harris, as a matter of fact. I have to prove that I am three times, all right, as harsh here as these white supremacists. This is how I got to carry it, all right, to keep all right, this non-threatening statue to them. I got to be three times as brutal, all right? No, as he's backing you up trying to follow the law some, the, the tether just runs up and just punches you in the mouth. Hmm. 
No, uh, race shows, you know, he got to be kind of careful with the laws. I mean, you're black. We're catching a lot of hell out here. George Floyd, yada, yada, yada. And comes one of these damn tethers to do possibly what I can't do at this time without it looking racial. Hmm. It was a similar story with Detroit officer Kyrie Roberts, seen punching a man without justification back in the summer of 2021. He was not truthful with investigators, so DPD prepared to fire Roberts. But while he was under investigation, Roberts resigned, and DPD incorrectly reported that he left in good standing. That made it easier for East Point police to give him a badge. If an officer that has a knowingly uh, assaulted a citizen isn't held accountable, the next department that hires him has all sorts of liability. Rick Jones is a former state senator who wrote the legislation that now governs how officers are hired in Michigan. After Mark Aldrich left Carleton PD, he was hired in Lake Orion, where Chief Todd Stanfield declared under the penalty of perjury that he had reviewed Aldrich's personnel file from Carleton. The problem is he never did. While former Senator Jones isn't familiar with the details of Aldrich's hiring, he says any chief who cuts corners during the hiring process needs to be held accountable. If a chief doesn't follow the law, should there be a penalty? Yes. Oh, you're damn right. Uh, there should be a penalty. Hold on, let me keep rolling. The chief is not only not following the law, the chief is opening up his city or his county to all sorts of liability from lawsuits. The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office declined to bring charges against Kyrie Roberts, whose license as a police officer was suspended following our story. Officer Mark Aldrich is on administrative leave tonight in Lake Orion. In the newsroom, Ross Jones, 7 Action News. Okay, Ross, thank you very much. It's all. Mm -hmm. All right. And Jonah Perry Woods, once again, thank you for supporting the channel here today. And uh, of course, Rashida L., thank you for supporting the war chest today in the Cash App. Understanding that lip service is not service, Hawks. And it takes for the standing uh, of, of, of all folks here to, to bring uh, their contributions in order for something to stand up here. Nobody can do everything alone here. All right. I appreciate that. All right. No lip service ain't service to nobody but the person running their mouth. All right. Absolutely. We're here to give you the real. That's why I'm here. I'm here to do my job. Gig. All right. Thank, thank you for letting me know that there's a value, at least some value up in here, Hawks, and the things that we believe and do every day, every day here. I do it for y'all, man. That's who I'm doing it here for. Mm -hmm. Lip service is not service. All right. Make sure you support the war chest. The cash app is in the comment section. Thank you to the people that understand this. All right. Now we can't, hey, I, we can't go ahead and, and float off of lip service. If we did that, Look, we will be nowhere here. There's rough times out here, not only for myself and others. All right. It ain't about any games here. I'm just being honest with you. All right. Thank you for the people that understand that. Let's go ahead and keep rolling. It's old town. For 75-year-old Catherine Weaver, the small town of Aberdeen, Washington, just two hours west of Seattle, has always felt like home sweet home. And my kids took karate lessons over in the next block. That is, until she was forcibly removed from hers. They started hauling our stuff out and stacking it in the street. And people were come by and dig through it and take what they wanted. Catherine says she and her daughter Liliana moved into an apartment a few years ago and quickly started having problems with the landlord. We had been there almost no time at all when they jumped the rent up some more. The cupboards and the drawers in the kitchen were off the rails. Despite always paying her rent on time, in February they received an eviction notice, citing demolition of the building as the reason she had to leave. If they were going to tear it down, why would they have been renting it the same day we got the eviction papers? There's a lot of pressure on 
some of these houses for landlords to evict people so they can raise the prices or sell them or turn them into condos. Catherine's case reflects a rising trend in the U.S. With pandemic-era eviction moratoriums and federal assistance programs now gone, some cities' eviction filings are dramatically higher than pre-pandemic levels, in some cases over 50 percent higher. Housing. That's no coincidence. Over 50 percent higher. Pointing back to what? Shaving off half the middle class in America. And we started to that case there. It was talking about New York. All right. To get New York to the terms of somewhat looking like uh, Michigan, like Detroit or what have you, like Michigan. All right. For the terms you can ride down at 530. It's not a whole bunch of uh, clogged traffic. It's not a whole bunch of people there on the streets. These things are more operated in the town to function for the rich and wealthy to be out and shopping and for the rest of the citizens themselves, they're at least the majority to be working. All right. No. So if your ass ain't working in them cases, you're at home. All right. And economically, they go ahead to make these things like this to where as though you can make enough money to pay your bills per se, but you can't make enough. You don't make enough money to participate into any of the spoils in the lit things in society. That's the key methods and premise that's being practiced right now. No, now, as I speak. All right. You see me so adamant about my principles. Yes, Santee, love the joke, man. But ain't nothing joking in the pretense of living and what survival looks like. All right. All the smiles go away. Folks start looking around the room seriously. All right. I don't believe in my premise that I've ever tried to move to where as though, all right, I'll speak up here at the last minute. No, I'll speak when it, when I start feeling the temperature change. All right. All I got to do is see a pattern. If I see something consistently, one, two, three, four days, I'm starting to trim fat and trim bait. I'm looking around. All right. This is worthless. What's the need of having this, this, that, and the third? And I actually make adjustments through things. This is how I've been able to progress. All right. Yeah. We say in the essence, no, the terms of a closed mouth doesn't get fed. You're absolutely correct. All right. But the context of you not knowing the environment of everyone else around you here, Hoss, will give you a misconception of what it truly is. All right. No, you talk about people having conversations with you in the cases where you're talking about, well, it was a misunderstanding. You don't really. And when you talk about 50 percent of America going to this height in rent. All right, where your ends meet, God damn it, everything you bring into the house to the proceeds there, 70% of it goes to rent. That ain't living, dude. It isn't. All right, and you think this all is by happenstance. All right, the name of the game here for white society today. All right. And especially for the wealthy, because this is for them. This is particularly for them. They want to keep your ass on the job working, dude. You don't need to meet them at Jillian's or David Buster's because, look, you too tired, dude. All right. No, you didn't work the double. You didn't X, Y, Z. This stuff is, is what it's made for right now. So if you're not a couple, if you are some lone wolf, if you ain't got your shit, if you're halfway shaky here, hoss. White society can walk right in, huh? And shake off the low hanging fruit. Hmm? All of it. Niggas that's been barely holding on by a thumb, by a shoelace, you're done. You're finished. That's that white woman you just seen on the screen. All right? Because let me tell you like this. If you're struggling in the cases there to make ends meet, to pay rent, all right, then there's no way that you have a lawyer to fight these things off if they're coming to you in a preference that's illegal, Halls. Do you? All right? People can play all this bull job. The average person ain't got a lawyer sitting on retainer. They're lying. All right? Your folks might got one. You don't have one. All right. And we don't need to sit here and talk about what somebody else has. All right. As I said, I'm not into the pretense of being phony with people, man. When y'all hear the tone of my voice as I speak now, I, I'm very much straight to it. 
Why and, and why am I like this here? Just to give you a, a fair insight about how life works here. Because the realities and nature of life here, in which where we get caught up with all the booty shaking, all right, you no, know, and folks smoked out, and if you drank enough, if you turned up enough, what what you had, folks have re- failed to realize is the dominant society is cold and straightforward, and it ain't no games here. All right, so it, it's like the cases of dealing. With, 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 with the puppet there on the bicycle from Saul as he tells you live or die, Hawks. That's what reality is today. It's none of the after party and bull crap that you see around here because it truthful in nature, this is what's end up gotten a lot of brothers and sisters caught up financially. Thinking that there's something going on outside for the majority that it ain't. This is the real deal. It's over 50% higher. Housing costs are increasing, but wages are not increasing at a rate fast enough to meet those prices. And it's not just tenants. Landlords are also feeling the pinch. Rising housing costs combined with tenants who can't pay their rent is forcing them to take drastic steps like eviction. According to national data, there were more than a million evictions over the past year, some 82,000 in the last month alone. I I leave eviction as a last resort. Brooklyn area property manager John Savdos has had to start the eviction process on two tenants in the past year. When someone doesn't pay rent, how does that impact you? I have to take money from another property to put it into this one. It's emotionally stressful because I know that I still have to meet my obligations, still do repairs, still pay the mortgage, still pay my personal bills. But for both landlords and tenants, evictions are taking a human toll. It's just such a, with such a hurtful experience that I don't want to go through it again. Valerie Castro, NBC News. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us. Hold on here. Let me go ahead and go back here. Things moving too quickly. I want to go back to that lady right here. All right. Thank you. Right, are dramatically higher than pre-pandemic levels. In some cases, over 50% higher. Housing costs are increasing, but wages are not increasing at a rate fast enough to meet those prices. And it's not just tenants. Landlords are also feeling the pinch. Rising housing costs combined with tenants who can't pay their rent is forcing them to take drastic steps like eviction. According to national data, there were more than a million evictions over the past year. Some 82,000 in the last month alone. Oh, my God. And that goes to show you, you said in the last month. All right. So March and February was this prayer and big deal for a lot of apartment complex joints here, single, uh, just goddamn it, owners period here, halls that have a land that they renting out here, homes that they renting out. All right, this is a big deal. All right, did this last month. All right, and who I was feeling it last. I was one of those people. All right, tell you, I said I ain't interested in fronting, man. Don't come here BSing to me, man. Don't do that, dude, because the seriousness of the nature is when you actually have a brother or a sister here coming in here, to, a lot of folks to speak to you to you at your level, you don't respect it. All right. Let me be real with you. No, you don't respect it. All right. When some phony ass nigga here that comes up and he's got this and that in the thorough. Well, you got to listen to what he's saying because he really like that. All right. Well, how is this anything special? You don't think it's at a. The, the richer person's advantage to keep you at the bottom, they ain't never going to give you no gain. Ever. I need you working, Halls. All right? Hell no. Because if too much of y'all get hip to what I know, I ain't going to have no money no more. This is the way that these dirtbags think. All right? Absolutely. You can find plenty of jokers that don't want to go ahead to put you up on any game because that's the way they look at you, dude. Oh, I need some fish or some sheep to play upon. My role is I look at it as black society, dude. If every last one of us are strong here, none of us can go ahead and fall. We're good. 
All right? No, nigga, I got extra legs and elbows here to hold me up. All right? Yes, indeed. All right? This is what I mean here. See money. All right? And the cash app, I see you. All right? Because lip service is not service here, hawks. That will be the theme here for today. Every time I hear this cash app ring. All right? And I have... I respect you and got as much love for you, Hoss, as you have for me. The respect is mutual. This is what you will hear. All right? Because we got to do better around here. For the channels that are coming around here that's like this, I ain't talking about every damn Ray Finkel and Rinky Dink Dusty Joker coming around here. Nigga, you can sink to the bottom as far as I'm kidding because it's still in material anyway. All right? You can come ride me anyway. All right? No, I won't get any credit, all right? But for the folks that go ahead that, that, that acknowledge that this work is, is consistent and you're black first, all right? No, and it knows that it takes a goddamn village, all right, to protect this damn child out here, Hawks, or to raise it here, Hawks, I should say. All right, thank you and much love to you. All right, can't, can't none of us go ahead to do these things on our own. The moment we sit here and decide to, you've already lost. Because everybody else is united as a forefront, as a community. All right. When Daniel uh, 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 Penny here, ki he killed Jordan Neely. All right. Ron DeSantis set past the hat uh, for his defense. And it is the channels like myself that come in here and clean up when shit like that happens. All right. Nigga, free of charge. Because it's our damn job. What did I tell you earlier here for new black media, dude? Ain't there's no money doing this. You gotta get in folks' asses. You got to do all types of wild shit, man. But there ain't no true income here to no statues of protecting black society. So that means that you're gonna have to dedicate your life doing what I'm doing pro bono. So pardon me if you hear me sometimes in some strides for the energy and everything else that I come through and I produce and you don't see any of the love in return. All right. Show me where a person goes ahead and spend their money in, in X, Y, Z, and I'll show you what they love. I'll show you what's important to them. All right. Absolutely. Well, let's go ahead back in here to this. I ain't forget what I'm talking about. In the last month, they cleaned up. Uh, 82,965 evictions in America. Huh? No, that's a big damn deal. All right? It definitely is. For some folks, they wanted you to uh, enjoy Christmas and possibly make it past Valentine's Day or what have you, and then it was cleanup time the day after that. All right? This is why this is important. This news story is very recent, y'all. All right. I try to make sure that the ones that I put up are recent, but you see over one million over the last past year. That's why that number is significant for the last month. All right. That's why that number is significant. Yes, indeed. And I got to go ahead and say it again right quick because, hey, look, his name ain't going to pop up here yet, but I can see it right here. All right. All right, uh, uh, Henry Shepard, all right, much love to you, all right? The respect and the love is mutual because lip service ain't service, Hawks, huh? And as you stomp it and ride with me, Hawks, I, I say the respect is mutual here, Hawks, and the love is mutual, all right? Yes, indeed, black first. That's what I'm talking about, man. No, you see, that's what I'm talking about. All right. You talk about driving us to be the best versions of ourselves. We can't do that off the of air. All right. Nah, dude. All right. You got folks over here. I'm talking about getting gamed up. All right. And, 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 that's, and that's fine. I want you sharp, but you don't sit back here and forget, y'all. All right. You got too many people that got them and, and you didn't did all right for yourself. It's time to forget where you didn't came from. All right. Now, we keep people caught up here with black society. And not only that, what's coming. All right. 
proud of the duties that we do every day here. We can't do it without the good people. And I'm trying to go ahead at least to shout out here today to folks that matter, all right, when we talking about what's going on here. All right, lip service is not service, all. More than a million evictions over the past year, some 82,000 in the last month alone. I, I leave eviction as a last resort. Brooklyn area property manager John Savdos has had to start the eviction process on two tenants in the past year. When someone doesn't pay rent, how does that impact you? I have to take money from another property to put it into this one. It's emotionally stressful because I know that I still have to meet my obligations, still do repairs, still pay the mortgage, still pay my personal bills. But for both landlords and tenants, evictions are taking a human toll. It's just such a, oh, it's such a hurtful experience that I don't want to go through it again. Valerie Castro, NBC News. Thanks. Ma'am, welcome to the special edition of Being Black. And welcome to the special edition of Negro Problems that we have faced for a test of time. All right. Now, I know watching us is quite intriguing as you laugh and y'all enjoy the finer things in life. And there's always been this payment scale here where white society was long gone. But when you've had so many people who had to switch their states from New York to so many other places that they used to laugh upon and they would never live. But now they went to go down there to seek refuge because the, the homes and the housing is a whole lot more cheaper in what have you. All right. That has made the housing market smile during the time of inflation to raise these shits up however they need to. All right. Yes, indeed especially when you see the young folks in a lot of the core here of having to deal with some of the elderly who have moved from the New York's and other expensive spots to spread out. And they're coming with a check. All right. You coming with some loan here you got from the bank. All right. X, Y, Z. All right. You understand who that owner is more privy to lean to. I'm just saying. All right. I'm just saying, Hawks. All right. These are tough and strange and horrible times here. Economically. Paying for a car right now, you be paying an arm and a leg, dude. Buying a home, same thing. It's actually what 30 to 40 percent cheaper right now to rent. That's just a fact, not my opinion. Mm hmm. I can go point to, oh, Santa, you got an incentive. You live in an apartment. No, that's a fact right now. You go look it up, all right? Just from the overall cost of circumstances of what inflation has caused right now. Not to say that these numbers ain't going to go ahead to, to settle down and tone up. There has been good uh, success for people in the fast food uh, uh, department there. I want to say in Los Angeles for some of them where they have went from getting paid somewhere around like, I believe $16 an hour or 15 to $20 an hour, which a $5 increase in there upon fast food is gonna go ahead and do you lovely as far as cost of living. The thing is they need to put their hands to work on all of these occupations all around America like that, especially for the folks that have put times and, and years in on your career, dude. It's time for you to start getting paid. All right. You go and look and you add up. But for some of us to have longevity and some of the careers in which we have chosen and you're looking at large percentages of your dollars being eaten up from your federal taxes, your state taxes, all the damn insurance that you got coming out, every damn thing else. They eating you up at least a uh, certain case with six hundred dollars or better. Tan your ass up. All right. Retirement. All right. No, you need all these things. You need some of these things. All right. I'm being real with you. All right. Because the fact is, at least for black society, you talk about in the working core, if you, you ain't safe to put none up, dude. You ain't got none in. That's just how the game goes. All right. If you put zero coins away, there's nothing for you to ever reach for when you get older. All right. And if you're praying to be able to have your hands on any form of social security here when you get older here, 
All right. You can cancel Christmas. All right. The government has destroyed so many aspects here of this game by opening it up to people who haven't put any money in. And for the recycled plans where you take these old folks that were only supposed to survive five years off their pension and give them a 20 to 30 years survival off their pension and stare at their children and say, now this is your problem to clean up because you understand all right, for money that you are spending, Halls, that you didn't put in, somebody else is going to have to pay the bill on that. You got that, right? No, when does America allow someone to have an unpaid debt? They can have one, not you. White folks can. All right, you? Oh, no, no sir. No, sir. All right, not at all. And these things have morphed to your children, dude. All right? Absolutely. When you've watched the Democratic politicians come out, what they always do, the incentives for old people, medication, free internet, things we're talking about in the case for a person staying in the house all goddamn day. All right? Let me give you more money on your, what you call a check that you're getting. All for the older folks. All right? And this, these things, year to date, economically have turned to backfire, especially for black people. Evictions are taking a human toll. It's just such a, it's such a hurtful experience that I don't want to go through it again. Valerie Castro, NBC News. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news. I got to be real. All right, I got to be real, man. All right, I, I'm incentivized to do things different ways, man, because look, the, the old methods ain't getting it, man. None of this stuff in here is getting it. All right, to, to be a, a thousand percent grand here with everyone in here, I love to do the things in here that I do here, but it consumes time to be able to put great work here forth, dude. No, it consumes a whole lot of time here, Hawks. All right. Special edition. Uh, Texas family, Texas school buses crash. All right. Concrete truck driver admits to using drugs before fatal crash. Uh, let's go over here to check this out. I am sure that some white man is involved. All right. I'm almost sure here. All right. Nope. Oh. Is that his face right there? He is right. I told you. I knew it. I knew it. There he is right there. Jerry Hernandez. You know, I tell you. All right. No, he can identify as white. They'll let you know everything he don't affiliate with Hay Halls uh, when you see his damn police record. Truck who struck a central Texas school bus last week reportedly told investigators that he did cocaine the morning of the crash. Hello, yeah, everybody. Right. I'm Heather Hayes. I'm Steve Eagers, nine o'clock. Those reports emerged soon after video was released showing the truck veering into the path of the Hayes Consolidated ISD bus. A preschooler on board the bus and the driver of a third vehicle were killed in the crash. Fox Sports Blake Hansen has the latest tonight. Blake. Yeah, Stephen Heather video clearly shows that concrete truck crossing into late the lane of that school bus. The school leaders, they are praising the bus driver for reacting and possibly avoiding even more loss of life. The Hay CISD school bus was bringing 44 pre-K students and 11 adults back from the Bastrop Zoo last Friday when a concrete truck veered in its path. <laughs> Come on, man. What, like, how much crack did you smoke, man? Was you still hitting a pipe in there? Come on. How much of the road did they need to kind of pull? You talk about, like, did. Halls. Oh. All right. No, tell them, what you call it? Jerry Hernandez decided to hit the pipe this morning. All right. And these folks in this school bus had to pay for the circumstances here. All right. I, I want to just I'm looking to see what the punishment is and all the background behind this. All right. And I'm pretty sure it didn't bother him to admit these circumstances because you're letting a lot of these illegals and folks with last names like this. 
skate free from justice halls. No, they don't have to face any punishment. Hold on. A concrete truck veered in its path. <laughs> We've muted the audio after the collision out of sensitivity to those involved. Man. The crash killed five-year-old Ulysses Rodriguez Montoya, who was on board the bus. A 33-year-old man in the third vehicle was also killed. This week, the district superintendent praised the bus driver's reactions. She was able to take an evasive right and keep the bus from being hit squarely. And I think uh, she saved all the rest of the lives as a result of, of her, her driving ability. The video's release came just hours before multiple reports emerged that the concrete truck driver, 42-year-old Jerry Hernandez, told investigators he smoked marijuana the night before the crash, only got a few hours of sleep, and consumed cocaine in the morning before work. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I'm pretty sure this is how Jerry Hernandez... That was the breakfast of champions for him. Mm -hmm. No, we have fallen individuals who were not supposed to leave this earth here at this time. All right. And old Jerry Hernandez enjoying the breakfast of champions. All right. And his white supremacist standard here. All right. Decided to go out and just slaughter others. It wasn't the case, as I always say, if it's a win. All right, because these are the dangers of giving free will to these jokers. And for them, they know, all right, they have some damn open line of damn near doing whatever, whatever the hell they want to. All right. This is what you get from the Alvin Braggs of letting uh, illegals out here, also, not only assaulting police officers, but doing every damn thing else. Tethers can get to go home and get bail for, for punching random folks in the face here. All right. And for the job market in which you have told uh, faked and told black folks here, Halls, that working at Dollar in general is good. But as far as construction and all these different jobs in which our people have had way back when. All right. We can't have these things. It goes to the illegals. All right. No, he's driving with concrete here. All right. Smoking weed, snorting coke and being a degenerate. This ain't pookie right here, Halls. All right. I know they wish they, it was pooky. All right. They might feel a little bit more comfortable in here. All right. Angela Pope Sims. Thank you, sweetheart. All right. Lip service is not service. Uh, the respect and the love is mutual in black first, my sister. Yes, indeed. In the cash app. The crash happened around two in the afternoon. The driver reportedly refused a voluntary blood draw. He has not yet been charged. The bus involved in the crash did not have seat belts. In 2017, the Texas legislature passed a bill that required seat belts on any newly acquired school buses. The district says the bus involved in the Bastrop County crash was from 2011. We haven't gotten the uh, investigation report yet from DPS, and so we'll wait on that to see if seat belts would have made a difference difference, but um, we are planning on accelerating our timeline to make sure that all of our buses uh, in the future will have seatbelts. For now, the district says it is focused on supporting its families at Tom Green Elementary and all of the students forever impacted by the crash. It can hit home, home to anybody and it, it hit here too hard, you know, it's not, it's not fair. Well, when you go ahead to pass opportunities with black folks taking these things in and you got to run the risk of incompetent folks with no background, no paperwork, no nothing, taking the reins. All right. Any similarities here, family? Can you see the can anybody say something about the what the, the, the bridge collapsing in Baltimore and this situation? Mm -hmm. No, didn't that joker just get here five minutes ago? I believe he just got his license there to drive to stir that whatever boat that he had there in March. Yes, he just got his paperwork there, his certification. Huh? Would you like to bet a thousand, Halls? Because you're, co you're causing collateral damage everywhere you drop these jokers off. It ain't working.
huh? If they ain't working, you're stealing. Somebody done got stabbed. A nigga's over here missing an eye. It's a leg all right, behind over the bush that kids can see as they go to school. All this is what happens. All right, when you're leaving these jokers to their own free will. All right, no people get harmed. Wild shit's going on. All right. Now, I believe, look, I, I, I am a, a person that is like, I can be superstitious as hell, all right? And I believe that there's bad luck groups of people. This is why your society is trash, all right? No, this is why you are taking a shit in somebody's backyard, all right? This is why you're raggedy, all right? No, you walk around here, you stink. You understand? You're raggedy, all right? And with the bad luck Benny syndrome, when you put this attached to your business, here it comes, all right? You're talking about folks that's running from little failure societies here where they can't get it to pop, all right? There ain't nothing going on. He 40-something years old and dusty, and you decide to smoke weed and do coke over here, all right? No, no I gave him a job and a badge, told his crusty ass he ain't got to take a piss test, huh? Here you go. Here's your CDLs. May the forces be with you, Halsey. Huh? And here are the consequences. Here lay bare the consequences, family. Right here. As you see this white man with his eyes closed. Huh? Here they lies the consequences of America's incompetency and dirtbags getting jobs that were meant for freedmen. Also, you ain't got to pay us, huh? No, I had to spin this on his neck. I know y'all didn't see me going to this direction, but yeah, I had to go ahead and spin this. The DPS investigation into the crash is still ongoing. It is unclear when it might make a decision on charges. What? Whoa, 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 it's not. Whoa, 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 Oh, that's why your eyes were closed, because you knew you had to say some bull crap. All right, come on, guys. You really want me to go out here and do this? Yes. All right, take your Kevin Love looking ass out there and say this. All right? Get your ass out there and say it like you're supposed to say it, Hals. All right? No, this is, this is embarrassing when your country's news anchors have to report to you after a child. It's this dude, joke over here, drugs involved. He's coked out. It's an illegal involved. And he's talking about they ain't filed charges yet. What? Huh? What the hell did you sit here for two minutes and, and 30 seconds for telling us about this mf -er and what he confessed to? There's your confession. All right, you talk about these bastards trying to make sure that they don't charge and criminalize certain people, Halls. All right, no, and where our damn taxpayers' dollars are going up, it damn sure is not for the matters to protect and serve us in equal protections underneath the law. That ain't coming into play. No, not when Jerry Hernandez has snorted some coke early in the morning and he's on the road. No. All right, they ain't even put charges on him yet. It's not, it's not fair. The DPS investigation into the crash is still ongoing. It is unclear when it might make a decision on charges. Mm, 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 mm. Within well, that whole raggedy ass department. Hold on, let's go ahead to follow up on this shit. Hi, you brought. All right, folks need to be relieved of their jobs. If you can't distinguish if charges are going to be put out in what charges? When well, somebody needs to be relieved of their duties, and you can let someone else come in there and and put this bastard behind bars. All right. Yes. You say white supremacy believes in protecting its own. All right. When they go ahead, uh, as my as my OG said, the white person travels around. He's traveling around as all white folks. If you kidnap, do something to a white person here, halls. They're coming to get him. No, they're coming to get that white man. You understand me? Yes. 
All right. In most cases, that's what's going on. They're going to at least uh, let you know and alert you that they know that this person's over there. All right. For the most point. All right. But you're just not just going to snatch a white man up and that's how it's going to go down. All right. No. Anyhow, let's go ahead and move forward. In other news tonight, the driver of the truck that caused a deadly school bus crash in Bastrop County last Friday was arrested today. He's charged with criminally negligent homicide. 42-year-old Jerry Hernandez is currently in the Bastrop County Jail tonight. This is actually a mugshot from when he was arrested for a separate criminal charge back in January. According to court... Well, why don't y'all have an updated mugshot then? All right? Y'all asses need to go ahead and put in that same paperwork that y'all do here to, to force the police department to be transparent here, all right? So you can obtain his new mugshot photo, all right? I smell garbage coming already in here, all right? Or based upon who's doing what here. You start off with his old mugshot and you're thinking in here, well, how the hell is he... What the hell is he still doing walking the streets? Why am I asking this question for every dirt bag we have on the screen here? No, how did he get back out? Who let him out? From when he was arrested for a separate criminal charge back in January. According to court documents, Hernandez said he used cocaine the day of the crash and had just three hours of sleep the night before. Several people on the bus were seriously injured and one pre-K student died. The driver of another car that hit the back of the school bus was also killed. KBU's Kelsey Sanchez joins us now live from outside the memorial at Tom Green Elementary School in Buda with the latest on this story. Kelsey. That's right, Brian Quita here at Tom Green Elementary. That memorial sits. There was actually a couple people here earlier dropping off balloons, flowers, and that is exactly what's there to show support for those victims of last week's bus crash. And now DPS has confirmed that Jerry Hernandez, who was driving the truck that swerved into the bus, has been arrested. Hey, CISD did release dash cam video from the bus this week, and we're going to show it to you. And we do want to warn that it may be tough to watch. The video shows the bus was going west on SH-21 when the oncoming FJM concrete pumping truck swerved over. The bus tried to avoid it but rolled over before landing on its side. Then police say another car that was driving behind the bus crashed into it. This incident killed a five-year-old Ulysses Rodriguez Montoya who was on the bus and a 33-year-old Ryan Wallace who was driving the car behind it. A search warrant reveals Hernandez told DPS he used cocaine the morning of the crash. I did speak to an attorney for one of the pre-K students who was hurt in the crash and he says more charges may come later may come later as y'all fork around this subject matter and try to play as much games as you can not only that with the photo and they're being transparent with some of the information but here's the deal when we start talking about factors of deportation and what have you man because my objective is you need to get these guys asses up out of here said so he's have to face some time sure put him in a prison great all right, charge him, you know, put him in prison, let him serve his 25 years or so. And then as soon as he's getting ready to get out, all right, his 30 or 40 or whatever you got, all right, multiple life sentence. I don't care how much, but he don't deserve to get out of prison, period. But if you do decide to let him out due to any technicality, th immediately deport this joker. Big part of America's problems is that the thugs can come join the rest of society after they've ser served their little... Uh, kitty sentence here Hawks. all right and we'll be going ahead further throughout um uh, at least through uh next week to monitor the situation but because a child was killed the news media is going to put a lot of time and, and energy behind this Hawks. all right that's what we're going to go ahead to do yeah he admitted he was high that was the whole essence uh set ride to like you know, even to go ahead to like to, to you know to, to put the justifications upon this. All right. I mean, they were gonna test him anyway. That's the way I look at it. So he ain't doing nobody no damn favors. Now, brother black, man, I do want to shine a light on him. Great brother. He pointed something out about how white society is sitting back uh in between the uh Jewish society and um 
white society, the Anglo-Saxon or uh, European society, I should say. Like they're sparring right now openly. All right. For the Jewish society there, they see an opening. All right. With the cases of Ben Shapiro and them guys at the Daily Wire looking weak, lying, backpedaling. All right. And doing certain cases of dirt here. And I'm going to put emphasis on what my brother said. Fox News can't say anything. Nope. Fox News can't say shit about, excuse me, Candace or Ben because they have invested years in propping both of them up, both of them up. And since Tucker Carlson is gone from Fox News, there's no credibility there left. And otherwise, in other words, Candace got more notoriety than a lot of those jokers there. Who's been able to fill Tucker Carlson's spot? The answer is no one. All right. Majority of Fox News, News viewers supported Tucker Carlson. And that's an interest that they have against the network. This is why so many of these other with the white, the white ring and white supremacists here on the Internet go after Fox News. Because a lot of their political interests in what have you aligned with the dominant society. It just does. No matter how they like to spin it, there are certain interests that they have to go ahead and be quiet and align themselves about. And in between the midst of all of this with Fox, all I've seen them doing is digger, digging further in the ditty bag, though the public knows that this back and forth is going on. They can't say anything. Not yet. All right. And this makes for a good open white supremacist war that you're looking at in front of you. Yes, Candace Owens is a pawn, but he, she's a pawn that they have built and gave credibility to. All right. And white society and these other Anglos know that they can use that. The big uh, dog's picture was is that Candace now she knows she can't go back to black society. She will align herself with individuals such as Tucker Carlson. I have to agree with that. All right. Yes. That is a safe zone for her rocking around it. All right. And it promotes her brand. It continues for her to go ahead to get bread. All right. Back to these cases. They are exposing the, the blatant contradictions in the cases of white society, period. All right. No, period here, Halls. Because you have all these Klansmen and, and certified, as the man said, Ku Klux Klans, members and types of things like that. And the first thing that they have, you see them go ahead to have a problem with is the Jewish folks here, uh, uh, Halls. And they'll go ahead and start talking to you about Christian faith. And when you look into the histories of that, none of it makes any sense. And it says to be a white supremacist does not mean that you possess a true a high IQ. It is It means that you conform to the statutes and standards of I'm white and I say so. That's the rules. But here's the real meat of the matter. When Ben Shapiro tries to explain what line it is that Candace Owens crossed. And so when it comes to the hosts on The Daily Wire, obviously everyone is able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes to me and says, you can't say X. Nobody ever says that to Walsh. And no one ever said that to Candace. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at The Daily Wire. Obviously there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Uh, and, you know, a, a lot of this has happened publicly. Uh, and the, but, you know, to the extent that, that the Daily Wire is in fact not a publisher, it is a pla that, that is in fact not a platform, it is a publisher, that means that there is no moral obligation for the Daily, and there's no free speech problem with the Daily Wire saying we don't wish to pay a particular host or that host saying I don't wish to work here anymore because again, there's a parting of the ways that I'm, that, you know, is not really open for discussion at this point. Do, uh, does it surprise you that so- Okay, so oh, well, let's hear this question. So many people, even on our side of this, are confused about that as it relates to free speech and quote unquote cancel culture. Mm -hmm. No, they see blood in the water. Came at this wrong. The statue of this is completely wrong. You claim your free speech and it goes to the terms of if you say anything wrong, about these folks, it's time to get you out of there, even when you blatantly know what they're talking about is bull crap and hypocrisy. All right. And I'm going to put it clearly on their uh, uh, culture and what have you. Most of them have taken the religious standard uh, away from themselves. They do not 
go ahead to live to the standards of, of Jewish religion. They don't. All right. I'm talking about the majority here, Hoss. They do not. All right. So because of these different changes here in the moniker and it's them maintaining white supremacist power here, Hoss. All right. They are always on attack for anybody who seems like they're against something of those standards. I say Kyrie, goddamn, he he put up a, a link, dude, and they took his Nike contract. No, that was reminding these Negroes not to get out of line. We'll shed blood. We will guard, we will destroy your resources. We'll come after you, Hoss, without even knowing the temperature of everyone else here, Hoss. This is what we're going to do. And then we'll check the temperature. The difference is Kyrie was able to stay in his position and be here in the league here here today because he never folded. He held the line. All right. Now he can sit up here now with his little Palestinian wraps around his head and they can't say nothing to him. He held the line and he waited for us. He trusted us. All right. No, nah, he said, I got an army. Yeah, Shane Sharp out here talking still silly. What do you mean you got an army? You got an army. He came back to go ball for his first game in New York. You seen all them little purple hoodies in the street? Shut up, nigga. You know nothing. You know nothing. Yeah, he has an army. You damn right he got one. That's why he chose to be quiet. All right. This is how it pays to depend upon black society because we got your back, dude. No, the real ones. All right. I'm not sitting here talking about folks in here trying to be in tune and, and connected to pieces here of the grassroots because it makes you feel good. All right. I'm a heavy advocate here. All right. For black society taking care of business. All right. And no, I get the pleasures here to being able to say it again. Huh? I get the pleasures. Thanks to my family, I get the pleasures. All right, to say it to you once again. All right. All right. Nicole Deshaun Conway. All right. Thank you, my sister. Much love to you. All right. And I look, I would say you say say, say your name in, in the chat room, but that's too much connected. Just bit my tongue. All right. Much love to you. Lip service is not service here, and the love and the respect is mutual. I feel that. All right. Y'all don't understand. As I point back to this, the work for new black media every day is pro bono. We got to take the, the longs all right, with the straights here. The crookeds with the straights, excuse me. All right? It doesn't matter. We may be in the best shape economically, just that in the third, but our, our dependency and the way that we flow to even stay anywhere connected is always going to be through our people. The same way white society does it, the same way you see the Asians get on point, the same way you see any other strong institution that you have out here that got legs. All right. No, we can make all the noise in the world. But if it's nothing economically to hold us down here, Hoss, what do you have? All right. You shit. White society keeps their tools strong, healthy, seeing out of both eyes. Good. So they can come in here and make up lies and destroy shit for us and pass all types of propaganda through here 24 7. All right. No, I always expect from our people to stomp and, and march for us here, Hoss, as long as we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. All right. We are the last existing line against systematic white supremacy here, not only in this country, but goddamn it, in this world here. All right. That deserves validation. And not only that, but this is an institution over here on this channel of learning. All right. No, you're going to get the opportunity every day over here to be able to get gamed up. All right. Now, I always tell the folks here, yeah, it, it is my duties until I die to be a servant here, all. All right. Still can't be a damn the best servant that you've seen around here, all with no resources. All right. You, you talk about Umar, but you over here, you know, look, man. I'm honest about where I speak from, dude. I'm not talking about some non-existent twi twilight fantasy. I talk and speak to people directly. All right? And I say this is to support the war chest, what we got going now, dude. All right? Yes. I ain't talking about some abandoned building that's never going to be awoke. 
is just dead, but you're throwing money on it. I'm not dead. Please don't compare me with, 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 with the low the low lives, bootlicks, Jezebels, and liars, dude. All right, I've earned everything I've got here in the grassroots. Every subscriber, everything I've gotten here. All right. All right. Can I can I explain to you why? All right. No, because the good people here wouldn't have it any other way. All right. Any 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 significant person you see here in new black media that you see that has something solid about us have been here for a minute. I don't care from the Lisa Cabarrus, the True World families, the one of LVZs, uh, uh, the KDs, the Brenda Hills, the, uh, 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 the 78 Sports TVs, the, uh, uh, excuse me, Professor Black Truths, Tyreek Nasheeds, uh, 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 the Black Authorities. They, we've been around here like fossils, dude. And we've had to earn every bit of respect that we've gotten from the people. All right. Every day, Hobbs. No, there isn't an off day. Ain't no such thing. Oh, today's Easter. It ain't that for us. It's another day on the grind here. All right? Absolutely. Because the same way we know that that wheel of systematic white supremacy is rolling today on Easter, so are we. You, you bad white supremacy don't sleep? Neither do we. That is our duty, and we're proud to do this every goddamn day. Salute to the good people. All right, and especially as I roll down here, because lip service is not service, and I mean this. Sister Nicole, all right? Sister LaAngela Pope, all right? All right? Brother Henry, all right? Uh, my family, C Money, all right? Joanna Perry Woods. All right. I got to show love. And Rashida L. Thank you. All right. No, for hearing the bottom line, Santee Walden, and showing love. That that love and respect is mutual because I know for sure you got it for me, Hawks. No, I know that's a definite. Show me where a person's to go ahead and spend their money at just at the third here, and I'll show you what they love and, and what they ride for here, dude. All right. And the respect is mutual. Let's go ahead and keep rocking to this. Culture like severing a business tie, as long as you're not throwing someone in jail, and they're able to be everywhere else is not. Uh, I'm not super surprised at the controversy. Yeah. OK, these people. And I got to slow it down again. And I love saying it every time I said I love saying it every time. All right. Yes, indeed. All right. I know we got to stop the program here again. And thank you, y'all. As far as the war chest, at least y'all look, y'all helping us catch up here. For the brothers and sisters, you're more important than ever. And I, I never call upon anything unless I know I need it here. All right. Or sometimes I need to go ahead to, to read and, and put things in order to let folks know what's going on around me, at least. But when you go ahead and you can reach out here to the good family and you get love back, man, there, there's nothing to replace that. There's no greater feeling, man. All right. There isn't a greater feeling. All right, I don't give a damn who you are. I live my life humbly every day. Shout out to Edward Jones in the cash app, brother. All right, much love to you. All right, the respect is mutual. The love is mutual. Because I know that you understand that lip service is not service, Hawks. Thank you. All right, I got to put emphasis on that. Beat the drum with it. Smack it over top of the head. All right. Show me where you spend your money at here, Hoss, and I'll show you what you love, all right, and your dedication to it. Oh, honestly, if I'm being totally honest, they make me sick. They cannot think in any form of principle whatsoever. One of the biggest media controversies in the last five years was that the New York Times had published an op-ed by Tom Cotton during the Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter movement in which Tom Cotton advocated that the U.S. military should be deployed onto the streets of the United States to crush the Black Lives Matter movement on the grounds that that movement had become systemically violent. And many, many journalists inside the New York Times said that is outside of our Overton window, as Ben Shapiro put it. Overton window Ben Shapiro is really not using that phrase correctly. The Overton window really is a theory that says 
You want to create as broad of a range of political views as possible. You want to widen the Overton window if you're a radical so that views that have been deemed way far outside of the mainstream get closer and closer to the mainstream. Ben Spiro, when he says Overton window, is saying there's a range of views that I may not agree with, but these are the acceptable views. Fair use. Fair use, Google. Fair use, YouTube. Fair use. Within our media outlet. And you can't cross the line here, and you can't cross the line here, because then you're outside of the Overton window. And he's saying we as a media outlet have every right to set the boundaries of what we consider to be acceptable views. And if you go outside of those boundaries, we have the right to fire you. And free speech is not implicated by that. Okay, so if that's the, if that's the case... Why was there so much uproar when the New York Times decided to fire two of its editors for publishing Tom Cotton's op-ed that called for the deployment of American military to quell the Black Lives Matter movement? The New York Times editors were simply saying what Ben uh, Shapiro was saying. We have an Overton window, and that op-ed was outside of our Overton window. We don't want to be associated with views that call for the U.S. military to crush a social justice movement against racism. That was their perspective. And we don't want to be associated with that view. We're not saying these editors should be put in prison. We're not saying Tom Cotton should be put in prison for that view. We just don't want to host this view. We don't want to subsidize editors who would publish this sort of thing. I don't know a single person on the right who defended the New York Times there. Just like I don't know of a single person on the right who defended NBC News from getting rid of Ron. Get your ass off my screen, man. All right, it's lactose, man. I tried it yesterday. It ain't no good. Too much of white society sitting in your face battling, dude. All right, would we'll suck all the energy out of you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you go through that. I need to go back here to the cases of the crimes that we got going down, and then I'm going to split, all right, to go to the grocery store. Thank you, family. I appreciate y'all. All right, absolutely. All right, no, the bottom line, at least... Always has things here in line for at least how I want to move things off the ground. And thanks to the good people, I'm actually able to do that. that that's a blessing there in itself. And I say thank you. All right. We, we should be easy as far as for the cases for us to be able to look to, to move when we all know we got different things to do. All right. We got to keep our family in mind. Now. All right. Yes, indeed. Let's go ahead. And, and, and at least kick back here to the last story I want to give. That did uh, a joke in here. I'm sorry for sucking the juice out of the show here. I thought he actually had something in parallel to the conversations that I heard here yesterday as I'm sitting here listening to him. I, I do not care for some white supremacist sitting around here babbling about bull crap. For a lot of these jokers, when it comes to the parodies of them being racist here in front of us. They want to warm us up with a whole bunch of talk and keep going around in, in circles. All right? Our objectives is just to give it to you raw. We don't need to skip around the corner. All right? It says systematic white supremacy can be confusing to break down in certain statues, depending on how you're looking at it, of course. If you don't have any experience with it, of course. When you know in which ways that it moves here, Hawks, all right. It is very easy not only to depict the strategies and layers of where it's going at here, Hawks, all right, or or just what the standard is going to be here year to day. All right. I cycle all that to put this back into the standard of cases that uh, in order to make your newfound citizens comfortable, they have to feel like that the atmosphere is something similar to home. Would you say that? The same way in the case they say, oh, now you're talking my language. You speak in their language. This is closer to home. Sanctuary cities. Oh, no, I got my man posted up the street. He's cooking Villa Swain and, Villa Swain and meals and things like that. And he'll, he'll cook in the kitchen and sit on the block and say he can generate anywhere, what, from about $700 a day, dude, standing there. Something like that. No, not $700. $120. I got the, I got the, num the numbers wrong. But for his circumstances, he gets free home, yes, free living, subsidized checks, the whole nine. This is what they're giving out here to individuals, all right, uh, of, uh, of Latino descent and what have you here in America, all right? That bad part here of the floor is 
everything trifling in which is in their country here, all right, that stinks, that's filthy, spoiled milk, outdated, all right, all the behaviors, which call it that, that, that taking a crap in somebody's yard, all right, you know, you sitting in here scratching your head, you don't know if a Doberman retriever, all right, or whatever, and broke in here back here, or a grown man was back here. That's what comes with it, dude. You try look, black you niggas are trifling. I'm not talking about somebody mentally insane. All right, I'm talking about a filthy ass grown some lawyer, all right, some well-to-do into this is how y'all folks operate in your society, man. All right, you no, know, I seen a bunch of Indians, man, trifling. This is over in a country. I told you this. It was a bunch of them, like like five or six of them taking a dump on the beach, dude. I'm a freedman. My people created the modern day toilet. So to my mind here, you're a degenerate. All right, you're a goddamn degenerate, man. All right, yes, you are. That's trifling. All right, and to some of these other folks, th this is the norm, dude. We don't need that here in America. It's enough for you to have to clean up after the dogs, all. All right, no, for a pooper scooper for the dogs. Uh -huh. Or one of them little plastic bags or whatever folks use to tie up for the dogs. What, for a grown-ass man now? Huh? No. You take that shit back across the pond. I don't want to hear no lip about it. All right? You're trifling. If you want to shit in the river or, or down some trees or out back of your favorite restaurant, just at the third, I ain't right, by all means. All right? Do that where you come from. All right, but don't come over here in America and we find your ass squatted behind a dumpster somewhere and you're doing a community wrong. Huh? Somebody done let your little crusty ass in here and you now you're doing a community wrong. All right, this is what we're talking about. All right. Now I'll be right back here in a moment. It's the bottom line with a look at a prolific robbery crew in Chicago. Police say they're behind at least 13 robberies in a span of four days. And this crew is armed, targeting the west and northwest sides. NBC 5's V-Win spoke to business owners and residents who are now trying to protect themselves. Shocking video of another brazen crime in Chicago as two masked men held a victim at gunpoint in Humboldt Park. We learned the victim was just heading into work when they confronted him at the front door. It happened around 530 in the morning near Division Street and Costner Avenue on March 16th. After seeing that, it really scared me because I can't believe that Amy Doe works right next door at One Stop Salon and says over the years they've made some security changes. We double lock the door so we don't let, you know, strange people come in or whatever unless you got appointments. Police say the suspects seen here are responsible for at least 13 armed robberies in a time span of three days. The robber striking in the middle of the night in Humboldt Park, Lawndale, and even in Westtown. Let the people know to be careful. Doesn't matter where you are, but it seems like we need more, um, you know, some police officer out there and check on the people. From March 12th to March 16th, Chicago police say three separate crews have been out committing these robberies. A total of 31 people have been targeted. Chicago police issued three community alerts in just 48 hours. You can't control this problem, ma'am. Chicago, New York City, other town, same process, same newfound assailants who quote unquote have to sit somewhere every day and they can't go nowhere. Seems like they can take their asses to the gun shop and to everywhere else to get some long, dirty ass gun and put it on you or some knobs and turn your pockets inside out 13 times. All's real quick. They got all the time in the world here to do nefarious things here, Halls. Yes, they do. I mean, they're not sitting over here, goddamn it, eating a bowl of Swedish meatballs. All right, dreaming about better days. You're a damn liar. All right, they're in Chicago robbing every person breathing air in proximity huh no you're going to get robbed twice okay would you put you went in the house and put a different shirt on i'm going to rob you again all right this is what's going on 13 times halls that's not that you didn't get enough money you didn't get enough all right come on halls so i mean why not pull one big one off 
All right, you guys are morons. Why not pull one big one off and then just get out the way if you're going to be a damn criminal? I mean, I'm not the sharpest butter knife in the drawer, but I'm pretty sure this is how this is supposed to work, right? Right. Well, let's just go rob everybody. It's not like it used to be, where we can come outside, play, let the kids play. It's not like that no more. You can't have your own freedom no more. This yeah, woman I mean. lives on Dickens Street in Logan Square and says her relative's camera caught this armed robbery right in front of their house. It's horrible to feel that way in your own neighborhood. She now wants to see a pod camera installed on her block. At some point, something needs to be done. I don't know what it actually is, but anything that can be done can help us feel a little safe. <laughs> but it's, it's too out of control. V1 NBC5 News. Man, I ain't about to do a goddamn thing for you, man. Yeah, you might get robbed for being on video. That's what I say. You just put yourself in harm's way with the bandits. All right, get noticed with Nikki. Yes, again, Black Power B1. Edward Jones. Yes, indeed. Thank you. B1. Absolutely. All right. Okay, I see what's going on here. Now I see. And since I see everything, let me go ahead and give us a, a quick reminder of what's going on here. All right, I've seen these damn Neanderthals yesterday, and I put a title down here, but all right, I've seen some damn white supremacists, man. You understand? All right, I want to go back to this. I felt the need. Y'all are some dirty bastards. There were five civilized tribes in which black people were kicked out of because white folks had decided that they were going to give these five Native American civilized tribes here benefits. So all Negroes had to vacate. You were no longer allowed to be a part of this when you had certain tribes by the name of Blackfoot. No, why would your stuff be named Blackfoot? All right, Negroes is black. It's me and you sitting here. I'm standing here right here talking. Black. All right, you understand? Right. You know, you niggas got to go right now. All right, next thing you know, this is what happened. Cherokee Nation. Gets fair use, fair use. It's a lot of flack for being uh, a thin blood tribe, yeah, if you've heard that term, but a lot of Cherokees do appear white or indistinguishable from Europeans. So mm -hmm. it does appear that it's a mostly white group, excluding black people. Yeah. But why doesn't the photos resemble what you're talking about? Because what you're talking about ain't true. Some of y'all seen how black these damn Indian tribes are. You type in Indian tribes right now, photos, and you ain't going to see a whole bunch of these pale peck of woods. There's no way genetically that can happen. And what's worse than that is them trying to put extras up to support the lie. You're a $5 Indian appear that it's a mostly white group excluding black people uh the, the cherokee nation is uh, has many faces come the foot this is a plantation owner he has nothing to do with any indian tribe look at him with them bushy i, I own a thousand negroes look all right look at him there's nothing Native American about this damn white man. This is a damn ashy knuckle Neanderthal, all right, back of the Caucasus Mountains white man. All right? And they're talking about how he's got royal claims. No, you all of a sudden got royal claims to Native American heritage, dude. Stop it. All right? He's a former slave master is what your grandfather was. All right? You can knock it off, sir. You're getting unearned benefits over here off of a $5 Indian deal, dude. All right? That's why you're able to get something. All right? No, they weren't clever. They weren't a part. They, they probably robbed the damn Native, Native Americans. No, he was responsible for stealing something out their house. All right? But he damn sure didn't have any ties to any tribes over there, dude. You go sell that shit somewhere else. All right? Look at this white man. Look at him. All right. No, he's trying to make this excuse for that's why I probably don't look Native American because I'm in here stealing money. And I right. We all know, Hoss. 
All right. These little crab cake head jokers are sitting in the back chuckling, staring at folks. All right. And then Rob G, man. And then Rob Friedman in particular. There's folks sitting here with reservations and casinos. All right. Government breaking bread. James Clyburn crushed the ass on the Senate floor talking about the Chakawa Indians. And they're just as pale as this white man right here. No, Halls. Excluding black people. Uh, the, the Cherokee Nation is uh, has many faces. Chief John Ross, the most famous More Cherokee doesn't. patriot and greatest principal chief this tribe has ever known. This is my great, great, great grandfather, uh, something that I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of. He was one eighth Cherokee. I'm one eighth, the same blood quantum that Chief John Ross was. I'm not an identifiable. Because you're not a Native American, sir. You're not one. You're not, a, you're a dirty white man stealing money from the government halls. All right? No, if they had to take one of them damn ancestry tests right here, they would have to remove everything out of his goddamn house. All right? Everything. They would start garnishing wages and you have to return checks, dude. You don't want to do that. No, he got a photo up of his old clansman grandfather. Why don't he got a feather in his head? He looked like, your grandfather looks like he owned slaves, Halls. Look at him. All right, he like, he owned plenty of niggas. All kinds of niggas. All right, take a look at him. Huh? No, no, sir, man. Well, I wouldn't kind of identify. I'd be yes, that's what it means to be a $5 Indian, sir. That's what it means. Right? He, I hope y'all can change the description over the years as you sit around here looking like Sam Sausage here. Dude, the only person that has to buy into the lie is you and the rest of the dirty ass white folks that's paying you. We don't have to buy into it, dude. All right? You're a liar and everybody knows you're a liar. All right. This is what white supremacy means. I'm white and I say I'm Indian. So hand me all. I get all the money. All right. Give me the government programs. No, make sure I got Barack Obama speaking on our behalf to get X, Y, Z benefits. Hmm. As he signs this bill. All right. And it's a white man as pale as him. Talking about I don't identify. I kind of look like Dog the Bounty Hunter. But. I'm a Native American. I got this Elizabeth Warren look, but I am a Native American. No, you're a $5 Indian white man. You, my white Mr. White Man, Mr. White Man, you're a $5 Indian hoss. You understand me? Hmm? A five dollar Indian is what you are. Something that I'm, I'm I'm very proud of. He was one eighth Cherokee. I'm one eighth, the same blood quantum that Chief John Ross was. Yeah. I'm not an ad identifiable nah, Indian. Nah, I nah. go down the, the you know walk down nah, the street nah. and say, "Oh, there goes." Nah, nah, nah. y'all some lying ass jokers, man. You always lying. Well, nah, every time somebody looks at you, you lying. The, that Chief John Ross was. Look. I'm not I'm one eighth, the same blood quantum that Chief John Ross was. I'm not an ad identifiable Indian. You know, I would go down the, the, you know, walk down the street. No one's going to say, "Oh, well, there goes a Cherokee." If someone thinks that just because we're we're light skinned that we don't live a Cherokee life or believe in the the Cherokee way, you don't. This is a money grab. You don't. I'm sure you don't, nigga. All right. You're raggedy, okay? Your practices are are very common upon loser, failure white men, all right, who find Indian memorabilia somewhere in their house, all right, possibly from one of your clansmen relatives who died upon everything else you got up there, all right? But the moment that they go ahead to get any traces of these things, here they come. Writing and making their pitch 
to get anything that's available for Native Americans here in America. All right. This is how they do. All right. All of them, all the little losers. You got all this extra time to get in the attic and look around because your life is non-productive. You really ain't got nothing going on. Whiteness has taken care of you. All right. For a lot of you little trust fund babies, the moment your damn parents died, they ain't really left you the money like that. They gave it to your competent sibling and they ain't going to feed you like that. All right. No, it is what it is. All right, you ain't really getting nothing from them. All right, no, you got to start to do extra. We know how y'all community works. Mm -hmm. Shit, the same way that y'all think we got new black media, like the same way that the FBI sat there behind down here, 1970s, 1960s, and they created um, an archive of information on black folks about everything the size of two damn libraries, Halt. All kinds of shit. This is what a little rat informant that was telling us here, all. Okay, he was responsible um, for working around the Black Panthers and others and doing arsonist work and burning down things. And he was to working directly with the feds here, all. All right. But he, he, he mentioned that in an interview for PBS, I believe it is on YouTube. You can go ahead and look it up. He's still there. All right. But my point and premises of that here. All right, it's for all the extra scopes of a J. Edgar Hoover and all this old bull crap for the limited omission of time that black folks have had to uncover white supremacy. We've damn near uncovered everything. Ain't been a damn thing you've been able to lie about, not even to the grave, even down to the cases of them coming back and telling you the real deal with Malcolm X's death and how law enforcement was involved. You haven't been able to hide nothing, Tulsa, nothing. Huh? These bastards have uh, 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 incentivized billions to keep black folks sleep, tethers, anything that they can do here to keep us broken down and we're still functioning. Huh? Lowering our algorithms. All right. Turning Negroes here against you to an ideology where you got certain Negroes here on the planet that are coons and they don't even know it. All right. No, you be your comfortable coon. All right, that's it. You've sacrificed nothing. All right, comfortable coons. Oh, no, I, ain't, I don't be talking about all that. Oh, I don't get into that. Oh, I don't get your puss, get, get your soft behind off the streets. All right, I had to catch myself, man. All right, PG-13 channel somewhere. All right, we can't be throwing this around. All right, get your Mickey Mouse behind off the streets. Get. You need protection, Halls. All right, get off the streets. All right, that's the way that I feel. This is my aggression, dude. All right, yes, truly, because it ain't a time for skitty cats. It ain't a time for folks that ain't down. All right, you looking around to try to see where you put your allegiance. My allegiance is in black empowerment. Today, tomorrow, next week, 10 years later here, Hulse, if I'm blessed to be alive, I will be right here. Boots to the ground. Damn a holiday, nigga. Damn a holiday. All right? Ain't no such thing here when you are in the midst of a war and you're dealing with systematic white supremacy. All right. And you are never free here, Halls, until you deal with this bastard here. And in order to have peace, you must plan for war. Huh? In order to have peace, you must plan for war and you are not on some comfortable slope of a cloud here because a white man then told you that today is a holiday all all right the fight and the words of the great mandela as he was released from the south african prisons for 20 some odd years. And he walked and marched 
in front of the public here. And the first words that he said to the people was, the fight continues. No, that small ass cell did not break his spirit. No, some of us seen it. I've watched the news stories of how little that damn cell was, all 20 something years didn't break him. Huh? He was still able to tell you that the fight continues. These were the first words he had for the people. All right, him and Winnie didn't get along. There were some things that uh, 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 we seen in here that were improper, but that was the first words that he had for his people getting out of that cage. All right? This is why parts of him, even down to his old lady, especially Winnie, because she rode all the way to the end, will be remembered here as far as black history and resistance is concerned. Globally, I should say here. Now, I'm the bottom line saying, T. Walden, we will be back here, all right, to chop it up once again around 6, 6.30, just as we did yesterday. In a minute, family. Peace.